It is a good morning. It is a good morning. Welcome back to another ICT Shotgun Saturday. This is where I get to jawbone and give you the things that matter most. And it's interesting. I was talking to my son last night, Caleb. He came by. And uh, he said, it's, it's interesting reading people's comments and complaints about how your videos are too long when it's you teaching how to make money. And they will never complain about sitting in a four-hour Twitter space when you're ranting. Why is that? I told him, I said, I think it's the engagement aspect where drama sells. Um, the ruckus, the rowdy stuff, it's, in, it's more interesting. And it, it kind of keeps them from falling asleep because you know, financial stuff is boring, really. Everybody wants the, the winner circle experience. And even my son, you know, trying to pursue maximum leverage, 15 contracts. He was trying to get there real quick, too. And I don't know if you've been keeping tabs, but, uh, you know, he's doing pretty good. I mean, it's not obviously getting rich overnight type thing, but I've never promised that. I did state that if you slowed your role, okay, if you went at a little bit more realistic pace, and didn't put too much pressure on yourself. Look for one good setup. One setup that meets the criteria that you have. Look for it. Frame the risk. Be content with making the amount of money you're aiming for. Once you get it, stop. And then watch the rest of the day. Or don't look at it and go back and look at it later on in the day and back test it. But don't open yourself up to more risk. And... Last night when he showed me his account, he is up uh, twenty five over twenty five hundred dollars in his top step uh, funded account. When I say funded account, is that really technically correct? Because it says Express at, at the top of the screen when he shows me his screenshots. That's that. Did he call that funded? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is is he finally got his payout, and it was nothing nefarious on Top Step's part, but. Uh, Apparently, the deal, D-E-E-L, company that was paying out to prop firms, they, they had him signed up with that. And for whatever reason, you know, they stopped doing business, I guess, with all prop firms or firms, rather, with everything that happened to that recent Forex company that got caught, you know, frauding people. But the... Uh, the money was sent to him. He, they asked him to put some paperwork together for him to have his bank information sent. And they got it. And the very next day, he, he received his funds yesterday. So very thankful for that, Michael Patak. Um, and those of you at Top Step. So I, I talked to him yesterday, him being Cameron. I told him, I said, listen, you should be thinking about just doing one withdrawal a month. Stay on track doing what you're doing and just do one withdrawal per month. And we worked out his bills, you know, all the expenses he likes to you know, see spent on. It's about $900 a month. So $900, I told him, I said, if you take $1,200 out, that kind of offsets the tax and it gives you what you're looking for. So that's like your wage. And everything below that or remaining just helps build the account up. So he's like, well, I was, you know, wanting to take. You know, a weekly payout. So what do you think about that? I said, I think you should take <laughs> one withdrawal per month. Don't be trying to chase the money. So I think he, he, he feels it now. He's like, wow, this is, you know, this is spendable money. Like this is, I can go out there and spend this. And it's a little, it's different. It's different when you make it yourself. It's not like oh, going out there and winning a, a, a prize or a contest or someone giving it to you at a, a birthday or a Christmas, um, when you earn it and you did it following a process, it's very rewarding. It's very uh, satisfying. And it's one of those wonderful dopamine drops where you feel like you want to get it again immediately. And that's the problem. That's the problem with this industry. It's the problem with trading because it feels overwhelming to be successful on a very short-term basis. 
in the beginning, most of you, if you were all being honest, we were all in a room where we could openly talk about what we have and how much money we have. And you were not afraid or intimidated by anyone making some kind of snide remark about how broke you are. I, I was broke. I, I was homeless. You know, I, I've, I had those periods in my life where I, I didn't have anything. I had less money than the bank said I should have in the bank account. <laughs> that's, a, that's where I was. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know what that's like to be broke. And humble beginnings is sometimes one of the best things you could ever come from. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you're talking about your son, Cameron. How's that humble beginnings? He's doing it with his own money. He's walking this walk. And true to form, I mean, as a young male, you know, initially everybody thinks they can do everything when you're young. And sometimes you can pull it off. Long term, probably not. <laughs> and it's just nice to see that because here's what I was going to do. I was going to go out and I wanted to put together a presentation where taking a very small amount of money and I was going to do $1,500. I was going to take $1,500, trade with micro contracts, doing one setup per day. And it would probably take me about a year to do it the way I want to present it. Because obviously you can see what I did this week. Like I literally slapped the shit out of the market. With a live account, folks. Okay, it's not a fucking demo. But uh, that's still playing around. And I think to myself when I woke up, you probably watched what I did this week and thinking, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to trade like ICT doing that. I want to make $35,000 in one day. I want to do $60,000 in a week. I want to make $140,000 in five and a half weeks. I want to do that. I want to do those things. I want to sit down with you today and just calmly remind you that what's wrong with making $2,500 in three weeks? Are you doing that right now? How many times have you tried to make money, big money, and you were denied? Maybe you did have a, a win here and win there that made you feel like, okay, I got it figured out. The next trade I'm going to take, I'm going to make this much more. I got a target. I got a money management idea that the aspect of growing to this number, that's the that's the management program. Not I gotta be around long enough and be able to weather the storm of losing trades because you're new. For the last three weeks I've sat with my youngest son and I explained to him, I said, listen, when you look at these candlesticks, it doesn't mean anything to you, but I want you to tell me what you think it's going to do. Go up or down from where it's at. And we sit with a demo account and we'll push and we'll see if he's right or wrong. And I want him to feel what it feels like to have that feedback of, okay, it did what I told him, or not what I told him. It, told, it did what I wanted to see it happen in the marketplace. And I ask him, now, what does that make you feel like? Does it feel like you imposed your will on the marketplace? Like you somehow made that happen? Or does it make you feel uncomfortable that you thought it was going to do something and it didn't do it and it denied you? And it's a worthwhile experience for him because he's, uh, he's 16 years old. He's a little bit slower in his development from a, um, a vaccine injury. He's not debilitated or anything like that, but, he, but he's notably slower than all my boys. And we, we take our time with him. And I want him to see, looking at these charts, as close as possible, and please don't take what I'm about to say out of context because I can't stand when people try to teach it as a video game, but I want to inspire him to look at it, to have an interest in it because he doesn't have an interest in it. But if I can treat it in a way where he can look at it, like the, that uh, Slither IO game, where you, it's a little snake game where you go around eating these dots. And you grow longer as a, as a snake. And unless you hit another snake or hit the edge of the parameter that makes the boundary for that game, you, you'll die if you do that. Well, I, I kind of like teach price action moving across the chart with that perspective in mind. So even though he's 16, he really has the mentality of a, like a 10-year-old. And it's very, very difficult to try to bridge something with him because of that learning disability.
So I try to teach things from a very humble beginning aspect with him. I think he's going to be a very, very challenging project for me, but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to work towards it. And if he can find something like even with Cameron, what he's doing right now, if he could manage to do that, I would be absolutely ecstatic. But with Cameron, his results, I would like to submit to you that that would be the best starting point for all of you. If you are not profitable, if you've never been, well, let me, <laughs> let me rephrase that because a hundred percent strike rate winning days, 10 days in a row, that, that's probably a little bit lofty. If you made that much in one month, trading with one contract, one mini contract, you shouldn't look at that and think this isn't enough because for most people in America, that's a, that's a mortgage payment, maybe part of a utility bill, maybe part of a, I guess, a car note payment, a rent, rent and utility bill together. That would do a lot if that's all you ever amounted to. If you never got past that point and you resisted the temptation to over leverage your account, to trade more than just one good setup, and when you get that good setup for the day, you stop. Let it sit and take root that you did it right. Be comfortable in the fact that you did it right. You didn't do things outside of the program. You didn't do things that were, well, retail-minded. More trades. Push your edge. Got to do it. Got to do it. Got to keep going. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. That's exactly what every gambler does at the casino tables. When? The girl, the girl next to him, hey, you're doing really good. Here, you want me to blow on your dice? <laughs> Subliminally, <laughs> she's trying to offer something else. You give me some of that money, I'll blow something else. But that whole reckless abandonment of just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, get wrapped up in the frenzy. And then when you take your results to social media, no matter what they are, you're going to have someone that's going to come out and be opposition to you. Oh, well, that's something else. You, you, you should have done better than that. I did something better than that, but they won't show you their results. Or they'll show you some stupid shit from 2021. Where the hell's they been trading since 21? <laughs> their opinion they've done on social media. Oh yeah, I knew this was gonna happen, but they have nothing. Humble beginnings, humble beginnings is the right place because you're gonna learn to trust yourself. You're going to learn to trust your model. You're going to learn to do just enough and be content with enough. Let me tell you something. If I could roll back time and be 18 years old, see, he's Cameron's trading before I, I started trading. I was 20 years old. And I don't think that, uh, I don't think I could have contained myself if I had what he has in his hands right now. Like, it's a very simple little model. It's very simple. An hourly or a 15 minute high or low that's most likely gonna be drawn to for a stop read. You don't need a daily bias for that. You need to have the understanding of the daily range. It's probably made its interim high or low of the day and there may be a retracement that's expected. Okay, does it offer at least 15 handles from where you think it's going to be right now until it goes to that low to take the sell side, even if it's going to go higher for the day. Or if we look at the hourly chart, that higher low that is most likely being drawn to, does it offer at least 15 handles? If it does, he's going to drop down into a 15, I'm sorry, a 30 second chart and aim for that 15 or 60 minute high or low, whatever it is in terms of the draw that he's looking for. And he's not looking for the full move because he's scared to hold it. There's nothing to be afraid of admitting that in the beginning. That's a humble beginning. He's afraid that if he holds on to it, it might turn on him. He has unrealistic fears, just like you do when you're in a trade. It's funny how you're in a winning trade or the better trades that you should be taking. Do you know it's most likely going to reach to a specific level? You can see it going there. It hasn't done it yet, but you can see it happening right in front of you. It's going to shoot right there to it.
But in your mind, you're thinking, but as I know as soon as I get in it, it's going to drop 30 handles real quick against me. They're going to get me. They're going to get me. Think about that. I just nailed some of you right now, didn't I? And then when it runs to the thing or target you were looking for, you're like, man, why didn't I take that? Right. Why didn't you? Here's the reason why. You were going to trade with more leverage than you should have. You were not entering at a PD array. You were going to just chase price instead of just waiting for it to drop down if you're bullish into an imbalance or run a very, very short term low. If it takes a one minute swing low out or a five minute swing low out and you're bullish and you're thinking for that 15 minute or 60 minute chart, folks, I'm teaching the model in case you're not paying attention. Once there's a five minute or one minute stop run against the direction you think the draw is, either the 15 or 60 minute liquidity, then you drop down to a 30 second chart. And the very first fair value gap, you enter on it. Your stop loss is 12 handles. And you aim for best case 15. He wants to grow beyond this, but he doesn't have the, the comfort level because he hurt himself doing things. He was recklessly pushing ahead, trading with more contracts than he should have, blowing combines. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> the running joke is that it's me trading it. So either I'm 100% strike rate, and I can trade and I'm doing his account or he's following a model and he's doing everything right and it works and it's proof. So you all that don't like me are stuck in a conundrum now, aren't you? Because either way, I'm winning, fuckers. <laughs> you like that? You like that? The house always has the edge, motherfucker. <laughs> so having one contract on removes the necessity about worrying about where do I take a partial? Because that was also one of the things he was having a hard time with. Where do I take a partial at, Dad? If I if I have uh, if I have five contracts on, I said first of all you're fucking up because you're doing five contracts. You don't know what it's like to do one. He's learning now, and you should have saw him sporting around here, chest out and shit. <laughs> He's like, man, this is this is really cool. It's like, man, do, and I sent a tweet to y'all. I said, uh, you know, what does it feel like right now? Like, what's it feel like to to see that kind of money coming in to your hands where you can spend it? Like, it's different, isn't it? He goes, Dad, it feels really awesome. Like, it feels awesome. Like, I was telling my friend Ashton, it was this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, he's in the typical where I was at when I started making money. You want to tell all your friends, don't. So I told him, I said, don't, 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 don't. They already want to be friends with you because who we are. And that's terrible. And it sounds egotistical, but folks, it's the truth, okay? It's the, tr it's the truth. And I want him to be liked by his friends because of his character, not what he has, what he can spend on them, what he can allow them to be a participant of with his resources. Not that, not that I teach my children to be stingy or selfish. That's not the case here at all. But I just want him because he's young. He's impressionable. And people that don't have things but are still lazy and don't want to do what they have to do to get it. They may take advantage of you. And I had friends that were like that. So some of the conversations that we have is me guarding his mind about how he should think about money and how that relationship with other people around the topic of money and affluence. It's, it's a tight wire that you have to walk very carefully. And no matter what you do, you're going to be met with challenges that are un sometimes very unfortunate. Your friendships will fail. Or you'll have people that are, are very venomous to you because they think because you have it and they're your friend or they call themselves your friend and you haven't really known them that long. You owe them something. And when you don't, then they start drama around you and they start smearing you with things that aren't true about you. And I told him, you know, obviously his girlfriend and him broke up because she went to college. And I told him, I said, don't be in a hurry to race to get with somebody else. The worst thing in the world right now you could do is go out and get someone pregnant because you're just starting your life. You're just starting your life. Humble beginnings. He's, he's starting from that right now. And I'm so proud to see that he's doing it without me lacing his pockets, without me sitting with him and telling him to buy or sell. 
I did some of that when he was in his combines, when he would be in drawdown on some of them. I'd say, okay, look, what you just did there today, let me show you what you could look at here. And I said, okay, it's going to go there. When would you buy it? And when the fair value gap was there, and if he doesn't see it, I was like, do you see the fair? And then he, as soon as I say it, he click. That's not me saying buy it, but he knew that I'm pointing out. So he's like, okay, I don't want to miss it. This funded thing he's doing, this express thing, that's all him. And he's doing it from his phone. Which, you know, the boy works. He has a job. And some of you think that that's cruel of me. You should just do this for your son. I did that with my oldest boy and it didn't work. He wasted the money. Got himself in debt. Made frivolous, stupid decisions. Put it in crypto and lost it. So now tell me about what I should do. I learned my lesson. I'm not throwing good money after bad. Think about how you would be recklessly spending it if someone just laid money in your hands. When you don't know what you're doing with money, you're going to be a fool. He cares more about this now because it's, number one, making him money. Two, he's, he has a, a process and a plan that he follows, which is exactly what you're lacking. You might say you have a model. Oh, I, 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 I know I'm looking for the model 2022. I'm looking for the silver bullet. But are you really entering on that context? Are you really using a stop loss? Because many of you that send me your, your screenshots, and sometimes I think that these are the only setups that you probably did correctly for weeks because I don't see a whole lot of it coming from the same people. But one screenshot will happen and you'll see the sell or the, the long entry line and there's no stop loss. And it's in profit, whether it be a demo or it be live, I don't know. And I'm trying not to be judgmental. I'm not trying to put my finger on any one particular person, but it, you know who you are if you're listening. If you're not using a stop loss, you're not really following what I'm teaching. So I'm not going to like your post, <laughs> okay? I want you to understand that. If there is no stop loss in that screenshot, you'll never see me high five you and I won't remark anything except for you need to stop or where's your stop. And I don't mean that to be mean to you or embarrass you. It's to remind you that that's more important than your take profit. And I'm going to say that again. Your stop loss is far more important than your take profit. Because that take profit's not guaranteed. But it's highly probable that your entry in the beginning as a new student is not as accurate as you want it to be or hope it to be. And you might have to see a measure of correction against your entry and the trade still be good. But what if it isn't? A larger loss is assured at that point then. And if you don't have a stop loss in, and you think you can just weather it because you're right. What happens when you're not and it drops 30 handles? Can your, hand, can your combine challenge account handle that? Can your funded account challenge or whatever it is, express thing, can it handle that? Your live account that you have your own hard-earned money in, can it handle that? You might have the money in there to weather it, but does your mental capital have the resolve to hold on to that and still think correctly about the marketplace. Can you manage yourself in that? Since he wants to know where these moves are going to happen real, real quick, the real snappy moves, when they're going to run, and the highest probability that they're going to run quickly. That's what I sat down with him. I gave him a high frequency trading model. Not that that's advantageous of anything else I've taught, because every time I teach something, if I say, <clears throat> say my, uh, say my son Cody, okay, has a newfound interest in trading, which he doesn't, because he's he's sour over what he lost, and that's normal. I hope he comes out of it, but if he doesn't, then good for him. Then he won't lose any more money doing it. But this idea of me sharing my personal life with you which you're not entitled to know any of these things. And people take some of the things that I've shared publicly and they've twisted and contorted it and they made some kind of nonsense out of it. Then <laughs> when I teach something about what they're doing or trying to do, you may feel this impulsiveness to drop and abandon everything you've been studying, everything you've been working towards to start all over again with something that may not be suited for you. That's foolish. 
if you are working with one thing right now, no matter what I show you, whatever, my son comes out, if he does another withdrawal, he might blow that account. Who says he's not going to uh, eventually go into some tilt and, and just go crazy? You know, what happens if his girlfriend gets in contact with him or his ex-girlfriend and says, look, I'm with so-and-so, and he loses freaking mind about it and just wants to exact revenge on the marketplace? He's human. Nothing's saying that, that can't happen. That's why you have to have a plan, a process, and you have to start very, very humbly, knowing that you can blow it if you go reckless. When you're not out there trying to prove something to anyone. Oh, I'm going to prove it to so-and-so. See, he, he put that down right now. Now, since he's seen his account grow, and now he had to pay out, I was waiting for him to say, I can't wait to go do and do it. You know his mind went to? I want to share this with other people. Do you think that if I, if I shared me trading with one contract, he hasn't even started thinking about adding more contracts. That's exactly where I want him. How'd he get there? Trading with one contract, taking one setup, taking it, winning it, stopping for the day. Going back and looking at where there was other ones he could have done, but he's still not journaling. Why? ICT, you tell us we should, we should be journaling. You should. But I have to keep his attention span very, very small and narrow on one thing. It's this process right here. Because by him doing this, he is journaling. He's doing the one thing every single day. Boom. That's it. And then he tells me about it. So he's not doing a journal. I, I don't want his attention you know, directed anywhere else. The fact that he's following the model is enough for me. Because it was an arm wrestling match to get to here. <laughs> okay. And I'm not trying to upset the apple cart. But his concern was, or his interest was, how he could inspire all of you. And I'm very proud of that. Not, I'm going to go out there and show the trolls. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I guarantee you these trolls don't have 100% strike rate on the day. He did take a $104 loss yesterday because it wasn't a full hit for his, for his model. He was allowed to do another trade. And he made, I don't know, whatever it was, 200 some dollars. But he's made over $2,500 in trading that Express account through Top Step. None of it's fake. If it was fake, I've invited them already to come out and, and call it what it is. You know, if if it's real, say it's real. If it's been scammed, say it's a scam. If it's not a real screenshot, if it's not really his account, he, he scribbles over Top Bet, that account number. But... <laughs> We sat and did that video the other night, and I already showed all of his his numbers by clicking on that thing. So I mean, I don't know why he does that. So if you're if you're listening, Cameron, it's dumb. I don't even think that even matters now. But the point is, ten days winning. That feels good for somebody that that tried very hard and failed. It feels really good for a person that just had their girlfriend say, "I, I can't be your boyfriend and girlfriend relationship anymore. I'm in another state, and I'm." going to college and it, it's too much of a distraction and it, and it bothers me he's in hurt it feels good to be doing that when you need continuity when you need it and it's hard to find it and you are the very source of every disruption in your life everything's a failure so having this model gives him a plan of action every day just like when he has to get up and go to work to his new job which he loves doing comes home he's filthy sore arms all cut up from the sheet metal from the hvac installations of the condensers and stuff and whatever the shit he's to say you know I don't, I don't understand it but it's, that's what he's doing that's a man's job that's a real working man's job and he wants to learn that skill so he can start his own company and i'm proud of that and maybe this 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 venue and adventure of a trader will help fund that startup of him. Truth be told, I would fucking throw money at him if he gets his journeyman's and masters. And now he's a you know a person that's gone through a, a couple business management uh, classes and managing that. I would I would front the whole thing. 
I'd buy his fucking trucks. I'd buy all of his fucking tools. I'd get everything for him. I would love to do that. But he might turn to me and say, Dad, I don't want you to do that. I want to earn all that and do it myself. And you know what? That's amazing. That's amazing. To watch him grow up and have these thoughts as a young man in the direction of his life. And doing, doing what I had hoped before I had any children, I was thinking to myself, you know, if if I have a if I have a couple kids, if I just could get one of them to trade and do what I'm doing, it will inspire the rest of them. And I've tried it with Cody. And well, first I started with my my daughter. She's the oldest. And she <laughs> that's a whole different show. <laughs> she is a woman of the world. OK, we'll just call it that. She's not interested. OK, so she definitely needs the support of dad. And. I guess that'll probably be like that until she finds a man. But uh, <laughs> my boys, I've tried so many ways to try to get them to, to, to do it competitively. Like, okay, the first person they can get a profitable account to do this with a demo. To do, to do this, dad will buy you whatever next car you want. It can't be a supercar, though. Still not inspiring. They're like, nah, 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 nah. And I don't know else how else I could have done it. Like, I couldn't have done it. So in a lot of ways, I'm glad that these assholes on the internet trolled me because you know, my children don't have social media. They don't, they don't have it. Because, number one, it would be intrusive for everybody to go in and, and try to befriend them and take whatever they would share on public social media accounts and use it to make some, some kind of dumb shit. But they read everything that's online. That's another reason why I'm leaving social media. Because they're getting caught up, or at least two of my sons got caught up in, they want to come out here and play vigilante and say, you don't know us, you don't know our family, you don't know anything about my dad. And this is what he can do, and this is what he's taught me, and go fuck yourself, basically, without saying it so much like that. And I've many times told them, look, these people are morally bankrupt. They have a failure for everything they've ever done. And if they need my name to market or brought, bring attention to them to make their little fucking ad revenue. And by the way, if you haven't counted the money I made this week, that's four months of fucking ad revenue on YouTube. I don't need your fucking YouTube money. I don't need your fucking mentorship money. I don't need book and sales. I, don't buy my book. How's that? Again, don't buy my book. Plural. Books. <laughs> Come on. I'm out here talking to you right now. And all of you that put my stuff on YouTube, you're making the money off of these talks, not me. You are. Did I put any copyright claims against it? Nope. I don't give a shit. Do it. Just don't take my lectures or my videos and put them on your channel because then I'll take that shit down. <clears throat> but I'm 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 wealthy. I'm happy. Someone asked why why do I teach for free when I can earn? Because I enjoy doing this. I enjoy it. I love doing it. I'm a teacher at heart. Before I'm a trader, before I am a martial artist, before I am um, anything, an entrepreneur. I am a teacher. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed to have the ability to hold the attention span of listeners long enough for them to learn from me. I've been very passionate about that since I was a teenager. I taught martial arts when I got my first black belt. I was literally immediately teaching on the weekends kids that couldn't afford to go to a martial arts school. I would be doing it for free with them, both Saturday and Sunday. I would do that. Two and a half hours. And many times I bought them something to eat and I didn't have money then. I just loved the fact that they allowed me to teach them. I've always had this in me. It's, it's been in, in, ingrained in me as a person. And it was interesting to hear my son say, dad, do you think that if I went out there and I showed my trades with one contract, do you think the people would be interested in seeing that? Now, he didn't say ad revenue. 
He didn't say anything about making money off of that. That wasn't even the inspiration behind it. Not one thing came out of his mouth about being profitable because he's done it. His mind and his heart shifted to, if I could show some people, would they be interested in seeing that? Think about that. That sounds like a teacher in the making. I will never, I will never teach you Enigma. I will, I will not do it. And an IMP 24 node is not anything that anybody's teaching. When I see that shit, Hoppy, you need to stop that shit. Because that what you're doing, you're promoting something that is not true. You don't know what an IMP node is. You don't know what an IMP 24 is. You don't know, you don't know what those things are. And mislabeling and naming something that is nothing to do with it is wrong. It sows chaos, it sows confusion, and you you need to come forward and say what you're saying is not true. Call it something else. But the bottom line is, is that's not real. I will never, I will never teach Enigma. It won't happen. But if any one of my sons choose to do it, it's probably going to be Cameron. And I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying do it. He's not even trading with Enigma, and he's got 100% strike rate by the day. And people have a problem with me showing my examples. Oh, you never show this, but you never show that. Why are you not dissecting the things I'm showing you with a real account? Why aren't you tallying it all up? Why aren't you going in and seeing, am I using the logic that I taught in that live trade? Is it doing everything that I teach you that it's going to likely do? Where is the forensic you know, <laughs> analyst that go in there and try to look around for things just to try to have some kind of bullshit smearing campaign? Folks, I'm writing four books. Three of them are technically around trading, and one of them is a fiction. I don't ever advertise. I drop crumbs, and I let people go around carrying them and spreading them all out there, and it becomes viral. There was a small little piece of that fiction shared, and I knew it would run viral, and you're all advertising for it. <laughs> You're working for me, motherfucker. I'm not working for you. Everybody wants to know more about Tobias and Parson. How about that? That's book four. You stupid fucking clowns. You got played. You have been played since day one. It was just me and God. That's who this is. That's it. See, some of you need a story. You need something because you can't accept the fact that there's a God. You can't accept the fact that there was a still quiet voice saying, look here. You need something else. Something else. It has to be something else. Well, it was me just praying and weeping. Help me and I will help others the rest of my life. You're so busy looking for something to keep you from doing the very things I've freely laid in front of you and said, try this. I'm not going to make any money off of it, but see if this isn't going to help you. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. No, no, no. We have to find something wrong with this guy. We have to do something to stop this guy. He's getting too popular. He's getting too popular. Everybody talks about this guy too much, and nobody's buying my bullshit algo box. Nobody's buying my signal services. Nobody's going into my workshops. Nobody's coming to my seminars. Nobody's going in and buying my courses. No matter how many discount codes and how many times I slice the price in half, slice the price in half, this guy still keeps coming up. Everybody keeps talking about this ICT guy in my comment section. Man, they're saying I'm trading his stuff when you are, but denying that you are. I see it. I don't care. So many of you want to avoid starting from a humble beginning. You want to step out there as a rock star on day one. And everybody that tries that falls right on their fucking face.
Think about it. You do way too much. You overwork yourself. You put too many demands on yourself. I need to make this much money. Who said you had to make that much money? That's just your wants, your desires. And if you got yourself in debt and you need to make that kind of money, well, you got yourself there. That's why they have bankruptcy. Some of you are holding on to debt that you're probably going to never be able to come out of and never find consistently profitable trading because you're stressed out with the debt. I filed bankruptcy. 1998, I filed it. I ran up credit cards and did all kinds of shit because I was going into court with a gold digger. And I had to show myself broke. And I did. And she got nothing. But I got joint custody. And everything I did until he was 21 was under the radar. Close friends, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Read between the lines, motherfuckers. Everything I've ever done, everything has always been calculated. Everything. And you have to be shrewd and more shrewd in the world today now than ever, ever. Because everything around you is a noose and it's slowly closing in. And most of you don't even see it. And eventually you're going to wake up one day. You're not going to have freedoms. You're not going to have rights. You're not going to have the ability to make this kind of money. So what are you waiting for? You have to get busy. That doesn't mean panic. It doesn't mean go out there and be reckless and sell everything you got just to put money into an account or buy combines at a ridiculous pace to try to get so much money. But you have to have process. You have to have something in mind that keeps you moving towards a goal that is sustainable, realistically sustainable. Not, I want to make $10,000 a trade. Not, I need to make $50,000 a month. If you can't take one contract and consistently pull 10 handles out, consistently, you cannot fucking make real money. Okay, I want you to understand that. I'm going to talk to you just like my child is in front of me. This is what I told them in the beginning. I said, if you think that you can't make money in this, you're wrong. If you think you can make money in this, you're wrong. In the beginning, you have a pathway in front of you. You can go this way thinking you're right and find out you're wrong. You can go over here thinking you'll never be able to do it and discover you can. There's a paradigm shift that happens. When you start following a process, you don't worry about the outcome. You worry about, am I following the rules? Am I capable of following the rules? Because until you prove that to yourself, money will evade you. Consistently profitable trading will evade you. You won't be able to put your hands on it or it'll fall in your hands one day and leave with interest the next. You have to have a mindset that's trained right on a process. So that way, the only thing you're thinking about is, is the market doing what it should be doing right now? Is the next candle that's forming behaving in a manner that is supporting my trade? Is my stop where it needs to be when I first put it there? Yes, leave it there. Don't move it. Ten handles. If you can't consistently go in there every day finding one trade, that yields 10 handles, you have no fucking business putting real money in the market. Because you you, you don't have any discipline. You don't have any discipline to, to hold true to a model. And 10 handles is nothing. That's static price action. Just look at the NASDAQ. Any random time. Any random time. Sit there. Watch it. In 10, 10 minutes, you're going to see a 10-handle run one-sided and it doesn't mean it's doing any directional thing at all it just means it, it had static price action of 10 handles but you look at this and think 10 handles 40 ticks i ain't doing that why because you're afraid when you show your results on social media which you should not be doing you know what's going to come from that Broke-ass people that can't sell their software is going to come into your fucking comment section 
spamming you saying you're a brokey. You can't do this. You can't do that. And they're still on live streams, blowing their accounts live for all of you to enter being shamed by. But you're afraid of their opinion. You're afraid of everyone else's opinion that you aren't doing enough. When 10 handles put $2,500 in my son's pocket. Real money. Did you make $2,500 trading whatever Mickey Mouse shit did you try to do in the last three weeks? Did you do that? How many contracts did you trade? How much did you pay in commission trying to make money but didn't get profitable? That's a topic in and of itself. One contract trading, 10 handles, guess what that does? It keeps you from overtrading. It keeps commission costs extremely low. You can't get any lower than that. You can't overtrade. You can't hold a trade too long. And overstay your welcome. You don't have to worry about moving your stop loss. It's done. And it's done with a negative R. And that's blowing people's minds right now. They're all freaking the fuck out because they want to see my son's results crash and burn. But you don't fucking realize, you dumb fucks, is this is a high-frequency trading model that repeats all day long, both directions, up, down, up, down. And this is exactly what I was doing when I ran that fucking uh, MT4 account out, and you all think it was a rented server. Fuck you. Watch that video I did yesterday when I recorded it live. When I had my youngest son sitting next to me, I said to him, watch this. We're going we're gonna to do something, and I'm going to share it with everyone else. And I walked you through every candlestick inside of a bullish breaker. That's, that's not enigma. That's just me reading price. These are my PD arrays. These, this is me. Enigma, I don't need a chart. I don't need that shit. The turning points, I already know. And you will never have your hands on that shit. If I was standing before people said, you better tell, fuck you, you're not getting it. You're getting nothing. I don't give a fuck. You're not getting this information. You're not getting it. I don't give a fuck what agency you work for. You're not fucking getting it. Look what happened yesterday. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Seeing it happen, explaining every little fluctuation. It's still inside that breaker. Everything's exactly as it should be. And you see these people that were commenting, you know, over the last year and a half when I would show my examples, pyramiding. You know, why is he buying there? Why is he doing this? That's exactly what I was doing right there. But I was doing it in every other PD array that was available in the price action at the time. I don't know what else to do, how else to say it. I've said this at nauseum. Everything I'm doing in front of you is what I already taught you. They're available. It's a lot of videos. It's a lot of things to learn. Yes, it does. And that's why I told you, this is not going to be easy. And in, for people that are lazy as fuck, entitlement-minded motherfuckers that think that they I owe you something, show somebody else. Honestly, show somebody else that's fucking loaded that isn't trying to make money off of you. Spend their Saturday talking you how to think how to engage, study something that's made freely available to you. And proving a real fucking money account. Smashing the shit out of these fucking shit talkers. And crickets. Crickets. We don't need a Robin's Cup, motherfucker. It can be right there. <laughs> and still stayed on the porch, right? Dinny. You little fucking pussy. But I get it. I wouldn't want to trade against me either. Because that's still not even me trying. <laughs> I'd melt your fucking face off, you bitch. But I get it. Yeah, Christmas is coming up and your family needs some stuff. So keep hocking my name and your stuff. Get some ad revenue. Do your thing. My family's laughing at you. But a humble beginning, that's necessary. It's necessary because you will be able to look back and see where you came from and you're trying to fight it. You don't want to have that. You don't want to have a, a rocky scenario. You know, or what's his name? Rocky Balboa. 
Here he comes up out of nowhere, fights the heavyweight champion, and goes toe to toe with him, and eventually becomes the the big wig guy. An underdog story. Why are you resisting your underdog story? I'm one of them. I had every opposition in front of me. My own parents didn't want me. I was supposed to be aborted. Came from nothing. I didn't have a silver spoon up my ass. I went to college, got all these fucking lessons in life about how to do this and do that, and paid money out my ass for it all. I had one Pell Grant and everything else I paid for. And when I got out, even with a high GPA, I couldn't even get an interview. Think about that. I got involved with a married woman, unbeknownst to me, got her pregnant, and turned everything upside down right when my life was beginning. And I had to spend my life hiding financially from her. Doing favors for friends and business associates that I couldn't be on paper with. I don't know why you fucking people can't see the obvious. When I say these things, it sounds like, oh, well, you know, it's this, that. Listen. You would not give someone a lifestyle. You would not do this if you were constantly called at two o'clock in the morning that we were going to take you to the bank. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. Motherfucker, I'm going to show you just how far I will go to make you not get that. I burnt scorched earth my whole whole fucking show. In 1997 into 1998, I ran every fucking credit card up. I did all those things so I could walk into mediation that morning. And she walked out with nothing. But I walked out with joint custody. In 2010, <laughs> I was so impatient about my son, Cody, getting of age. I was chomping at the bit because I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew my life was going to be able to be more free once he's older. And I, was, I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. So to, to take that energy and impatience that I was feeling, I started pouring it into baby pips, teaching everybody over there for free. And then one day I came home and saw somebody over in the Middle East was taking my free shit and selling it. And I got a case of the ass. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. If anybody's going to make money off of it, I am. I mean, just listen to my Twitter spaces. I swing from one spectrum to the next. It's hard. It's hard wrestling it. And then when my stuff starts getting out there and being renamed. But I'm the one being called the renaming person. That's bullshit. That's why I have a $5 million bounty. Somebody go out there right now and find all this stuff. Find a volume imbalance. Find a breaker. Find what I was showing you yesterday in live price action on a seconds chart and then watch how prices ran away. That is in nothing else. Not Chris Laurie, not Supply and Demand, not Wyckoff, not Elliott Wave, nobody's harmonic horse shit. Nobody has this. It never existed until I shared it. And I came from a humble beginning. Some of you need a science fiction explanation that's outside of the Lord himself literally guiding me. That's, the, that's what it is. That's, that's what it's always been. But if you want a story, I'll show you. I'll tell you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I like Tom Clancy, too. But when I tell you and you don't believe me, and then when you try to pick it apart and say it's this and it's that, and then when I start doing it with a live account, you can't accept that. Nobody says anything about the live examples with real money. They're ignoring it. Like, it, ain't, it didn't happen. And that's, to me, fascinating. It's fascinating to see how denial at that peak level is being shown right now. <laughs> I 
there are things that I know how to do that if I did it publicly, I absolutely know that I would have a knock on my door that day or the very next day. I know. I, I know. I absolutely fucking know it. I was in Patrick Whelan's live stream the other day and everybody was in there. I love when he does a poll. Even if he doesn't do a poll, I, I, I read their room, what people are saying and stuff and their chatter. It's going up, it's going down, going up, going down. And I told everybody where the market was going to go. I told them where the sell side of the quarter deal was. And everybody was expecting to do this and that and the other thing and went right down there, swept it by a hand or two. And that was the low of the day. <laughs> and round all the way up into, you know, deep, deep, deep buy side. When I say I like a level and I'm on a daily chart, that's where I ultimately want to see price eventually gravitate to. Like the Corley shift objective, which S&P is really close to it. Have you noticed that? We're going down there, folks. But it's not going to be a straight shot. Just like I told you, it's not going to be a straight shot. So everything you're doing, the larger trades that you should be taking, the ones you're trying to hold, they got to be in that direction. And don't overstay your welcome when you're going against it. Yes, you can make money going long. You saw me going long and short with a real account. And you read these dumb fucks. Oh, all I see is a demo account. You can't fucking read. You can't see that that fucking says AMP live. <laughs> make your trading view say that. With a fake fucking demo account. Do it. Fucking clownery. But all this kind of stuff. It, it's tiresome for me. Because I know. As much as it is satisfying to do it. Like I did this week. <laughs> I was being very belligerent. By doing it. But. It's very satisfying at the time doing it. But today, sitting, waking up and thinking about how I behaved and how I conducted myself very unprofessionally. But guess what? Given an opportunity to do it again, I would do it exactly the way I did it. Because sometimes you just need to rub their fucking noses in it. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the puppies are upstairs. I'm in the basement right now looking at the rain outside. We got a tropical storm cushion up in our area. It's actually kind of cool out, windy and raining. And they can't go out. And run around, so they're up here running across the floor, and it sounds like they're tearing a joint up. But uh, waking up this morning, thinking about you know how I how I spoke on social media. One person said, "Oh, you know, stop body shaming," because I said this person has small dick energy or small dick syndrome. Saying, "Oh, you know, some of us have little dicks, and you're offending us." <laughs> I don't know if that was a trolling comment, you know, on the sly or. If that was sincere, but listen, if you're offended by anything I'm saying, grow the fuck up, okay? Because I'm literally unfiltered out here. I'm not trying to be your mentor on Twitter. This is my playground. This is where I vent. This is where I call all these little fucking slap happy fucks exactly what they are clowns. They can't trade. They can't do shit. And I'm killing their fucking business. I'm stomping all over their fucking shit like fucking Godzilla going thermonuclear and they can't sell their fucking shit. And I fucking love it. I fucking love it. I love when you send me your threatening fucking emails. I love when you fucking send me fucking mail saying it's going to come for you, bitch. Bitch, I'm sitting here strapped to the fucking gills. I don't give a fuck. Show the fuck up. Show up. Run up and get, uh, get done up, motherfucker. Do I sound like I'm fucking intimidated by you, bitch? Do I sound like I fucking give a fuck about what you think you can fucking do? I don't live in fear, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. Fuck you and your bullshit. You can't stop shit. Your Mickey Mouse fucking indicator bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. I'd like to rewind the tape and do it more than I did this week. <laughs> I don't fucking regret what I did. These people have had the luxury of me teaching you in a demo account, being modest, being modest as a mentor, not trying to show these fucking clowns that they are nobody and not trying to give you something to 
feel like you have to live up to as a student. Oh, I have to do this now because I see my student can't feel accomplished doing what like, my son's doing right now. That's the proper way. That's the proper way, folks. Not trying to over leverage 15 contract your fucking account. That's not how you do it. You're, the only thing you're going to learn by doing that is exactly what my son discovered. Fear of being wrong. Because it, it, it hurts. It will hurt you. If you do it that way and you do it wrong, the only lesson you have learned is to be fearful of the decisions that you're going to make in the future or be so scared that you are afraid to take the decisions at all. That's scar tissue. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Why I teach you in a demo account. Because if I do it as your teacher, your hero, which I'm fucking not, I'm an anti-hero. If I do it, and I'm publicly out here in front of everybody, teaching through a demo, why should you be ashamed of it? Why should you be ashamed of learning how to trade with a demo account? Because the guy that's getting the most follows on YouTube Showing and teaching through a demo account, and these same four fucking people with their sock puppet accounts come in my fucking comment section all the time, talking about demo, demo, demo. Even when it's showing it's a live account, they still say it's demo. I'm killing them. I'm literally dismantling all their shit because they can't fucking beat me. They can't outperform what you're learning for free, and you should be fucking thankful that I'm not rooking your fucking asses for money that I could easily get. I could easily slap a fucking PayPal link on my shit right now and get millions of fucking dollars this week. This fucking week. I could put out there and say, I will sell you access to signals if you cancel your fucking shit and do a chargeback against the people you're with right now. Get a chargeback, put against them, join my shit, and I will give it to you half off. I will fucking murder these fucking people. Keep fucking around with me, motherfuckers. Keep fucking around, and I will burn your shit to the ground for the people that you're still fucking over. Don't read too much into that. I'm not going into this sales business, but I want you to understand that, that that's the mentality I have. <laughs> I will fucking do it. If I will fucking roast my own shit in 1997 so I can walk in and look like I'm broke to get my shit done, so I ain't got to live with a woman in my fucking back pocket all these. No, no, no. No, fuck no. Don't inspire me, okay? Don't fucking inspire me to wreck your shit. You're making money right now with the fucking fools that are following you right now. But you're not going to convince my fucking students that are actually fucking learning how to do this to start all of a sudden paying you for something they had to fucking do for free. Don't fucking inspire me to come back here in 2024 and wreck the rest of your fucking answers. The best thing you can fucking do is shut your fucking mouth. Be thankful that you have a bunch of fucking fools willing to pay you for something. Because you can't fucking make money in the marketplace. You can't do shit. Because if you could really fucking turn it in the marketplace, if you really could, you'd be doing like I am. If you really gave a fuck about your fucking students, you would be doing it for fucking free. On your free fucking time, on your fucking weekends, you'd be pouring your time and encouragement into them. Not coming up with some kind of fucking discount fucking code, some kind of marketing fucking scheme. I am. The epitome of a fucking mentor. I'm doing everything you would want a mentor to do. Prove he can do it. Show me that he fucking gives a fuck. Show me that he really cares about me. Show me that he can fucking encourage me even when I'm doing it wrong. Find a way to inspire me to do it, but still hold me accountable. And don't ask anything of me except for real attempt and effort. That's, what the, that's, the, that's the currency here, folks. That's the exchange rate here. You have to put your fucking effort behind it. I can't do that part for you. I can cheerlead you on. I can kick you in the fucking ass and tell you, you got to do it this way. There's no shortcuts. But ultimately, you have to start. And you have to maintain that level of tenacity to keep doing it. And it's going to be hard if you invite these asshats on social media to discourage you and distract you. Misery loves company. And these fuckers are miserable. They're miserable. And it's a shame. 
It's a fucking shame because honestly, I didn't come out here years ago. I did not come out here to try to be some fucking menace to people. I didn't. That was not my inspiration, but because I have an issue. I do. I have a fucking issue that if I'm triggered, I'm going to behave in a manner that is not very gentlemanlike. But once it once it runs its course, then I'm done with it. I don't hate anybody, even Vinny. I don't hate him. I'm a, I'm disappointed that he's tried to do this because I many times in the past I told him I said you know I'll sit with you, you know I'll bring an audience. I, but it, he, he doesn't conduct himself well. I'm not saying I do either because look at me. <laughs> but I'm not doing that kind of shit. I'm not making up some bullshit. Photoshopping shit and fucking putting shit together saying this. My children do not live in fucking trailer parks, okay? They don't do that. I did not lose fucking Robin's Cup multiple fucking times. That's fucking a lie. That screenshot of the... I can't remember what it was now, but I was trolling Sean... For the life of me, Sean Lee. Sean Lee Powell, I think that's his full name, from Astro Effects, because he was like the big thing at the time. And everybody was like, you know, trade against him, trade against him. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll trade against him. But when I asked him, he basically said, come to England, I'll cut your fucking throat. Okay, well, come to, come over here to Maryland, try that, and I can stick that fucking link up your ass. How's that work for you, Shoney? But the point is this. I'm not Raja Banks. You're not going to show up to here and talk some shit. I'll beat your fucking ass. So I encouraged him to trade against me. And it was like... He kept showing stuff, you know, his cars and all this other bullshit. And I was like, okay, they keep showing these screenshots of MT4, screenshots of MT4, and then always be some kind of snide little remark about, you know, living life, you're a winner, this kind of thing. And I basically was trolling him. I literally was trolling him. So all of that shit that people are taking and they're trying to twist it up, you, you weren't there when I was going at it with Sean Lee. You, none of you were there. Some of you, my older students, were. But all of these people are taking these little pieces of me being a troll when I wasn't trying to be a paid mentor. I was literally just going out there and just having fun on social media. When I ran them fucking MT4 accounts up, that was legitimately doing what you see me do now. Right now, I was doing all that stuff up, down, all day long. Boom, 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 boom. 5% leverage each fucking trade. Every new partial was risking 5%. That's how it was done. I don't know how many fucking times I got to tell you that. But see, because you weren't there. You weren't there. They can take this stuff and twist it and Photoshop it and put a different kind of spin on it and make it look like it's something entirely else. Where are your excuses for me trading right now, calling it before it happens in front of everybody, putting it on video? There's time and date stamped. The market's going to go here, and it does it on a daily chart. It's going to do this on a 30-second chart. It's going to do this. I'm calling it live minute by minute on the fucking Twitter account, Twitter spaces, posting it. It's time and date stamped. I'm trading with a live fucking account. I'm making your annual fucking salary in a fucking week. Where the fuck is your – where's your discrediting of that? You're fucking fools. You are fools. <laughs> Why the fuck aren't these motherfuckers trading against me? Exactly. If I was such a fucking fraud, they would have stepped out here and shown how much better they are. And they're scared, cowering in their fucking corners. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I love it. It's so much entertainment. I'm always wanting to stay past fucking November because of it. <laughs> Man, come on. Seriously. But some of these people believe it. Some people literally see that shit and they won't. Uh, let, me, let me just see if this guy can trade. Let me see if he's really pushing the button. Oh, that is a real account. But look at this over here. He's teaching in a demo account. Why would he want to do that? Because if I'm teaching, listen, folks, here, I really want you to understand this because some of you are fucking stupid. In the United States, okay, in the United States, there's an entity called the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. I am not a regulated, certified trade advisor. I mean, I'm not a CTA. I'm not licensed to give you trade advice. But guess what I fucking can do? I can give you my opinion that my fucking disclaimer shows in my videos and below the videos in that disclaimer. It explains how my opinion is just that. And there is real risk if you put real money behind it. But my opinion is not meant for you to go out there and take a trade with it. 
But if I teach you a conceptual idea that I have absolute faith in, that my students that are using and making real money with have faith in, but not that you should have faith in because you have to find that on your own. If I do this in a demo account, number one, I am not incurring real risk. I'm not incurring monetary gain. And you can't either because it's never been framed as investment advice. When I did my mentorship, it was always on the pretense that it was going to be demo. When they signed up, the agreement stated that you were going to be learning how to read price action through the medium of a demo account. There's no profitability promised. You cannot make or lose any money doing this. Now, the fine line is this. The apt person, student, buyer, reader, study, student, user would start to think to themselves, hey, you know, yeah, this is a demo account, but what would happen if I got really good at it in a demo and made the decision to just try to do it with real money? What would the results be? That's the discovery that you find on your own. I didn't, I didn't inspire you to do that. I never tell anybody to go into live funds, even when I'm doing the lectures, even when I'm doing these Twitter spaces like this. I'm never telling you to go out there and trade with real money. It's never happened. It's never fucking happened. When you do it and you make money, you got the credit. All of it. It's not mine. But when you lose, and you will lose, you have to eat that. Chew it and swallow. And some people aren't willing to do that. Human beings, well, look at them. I'm giving you a gift that none of you are entitled to. Encouraging you, teaching you more and more about it, how to do it, and showing you with real money. Real money. When's the last time you saw anyone teaching bullshit that they teach and then literally go into a chart with a live account, walk you through the minute by minute and now second by second candlestick about what it should do? and behave in time exactly when it's going to run away. Because I've never seen that. I've never seen it. Maybe you can direct me to somebody that's doing it. I would love to watch that. I would love to watch someone do that. Not talk about price. I want to see them push a fucking button, get in there and risk real money. I'm showing you what you're not entitled to. I'm showing you real account executions. That's exactly what I said you would see. I did not promise I was going to trade real money in front of you because if I do that, I'm acting like a what? Trade advisor. Because if I'm willing to put the money on it in front of you, that means that you're going to probably be doing it too. And that means you're probably going to over leverage your account because if I'm going to do it with my money, it must be good enough to be worthwhile. And you're going to push the limits and you're going to do that 15 contract ex exposure in your combine, your funded account, or your real money account. And if I do it wrong, and I have had losing trades before, folks, that's happened. What happens if that next trade I take is a losing trade and you've maxed out? I can't live with myself with that risk. I can't. I can't. You might be willing to take that risk. I'm not willing to subject you to that. Truth be told, if Larry Williams in the beginning, okay, in 1995, if I would have been sitting in a, a medium like this, or if YouTube was a thing, and he was willing to sit up there and take his live trades, I swear to God, I would have done everything over leverage because he's in it. So you think it's far-fetched for me to have that opinion about all of you? If I was willing to sit out there and trade with real money in front of all of you, what you would do? I already know what you would do. Some of you would have every one of your 12 fucking connected fucking copy accounts fully leveraged to the fucking gills with every trade. That's why these funded account companies want me there. They want to be able to do that. They want to parlay everything. And I won't do that. Your credit has to be earned. My son will not run that top step account up to astronomical feats. He's not going to do it. He's running it up to $10,000. He's taking the money and he's closing it. That's all he's doing. That's all he's doing. Then when he takes that $10,000, he's going to put it in AMP Futures. It's a real brokerage account. I'm not repping AMP. I'm not an affiliate. There's no fucking kickback. I've had issues with them, but for the most part, they're like anything else. They're any other broker. Everybody's going to have an issue. When I have trades that would be beneficial for me, 
to close and I, it's not on a limit basis. If I close it, the screen fades out for a little bit and the profit drops two or three times, then it closes me out. Is that shenanigans? Probably. Is it enough for me to want to stop doing business with them? No. I mean, it, it, there's going to be issues with every brokerage firm out there. Every brokerage firm has their faults. Every company that you deal with is going to have their faults. And because of that, and the fact that when I talk about things from an opinionated stance about things I think is a good or a bad thing about a company or a resource or a tool or something to that effect, when I'm telling you my opinion about it, it's real. I'm not – I don't have an affiliation with anybody. No one's lacing my palm with money. No one's paying me for my support. I've literally had just about everybody come at me asking me, would you like to go into a partnership with us? We would pay you this much money and then a kickback on this. I literally, and folks, you know who you are. It was always the same thing. I appreciate you asking, but I don't do those things. D that's it. That's the way it is. That's what I would want my mentor to be like. I'm not going to be influenced by anybody. I don't have an ulterior motive. I have nothing making me money except for what I do on my own. If I have a resource, I paid for it. If I use something, I paid for it. It's not gifted to me. It's not a, hey, look, we're going to give you this if you talk about it on your live stream, if you talk about it on your Twitter. I have people do that all the time. All the time. And it's no. No, I could make millions of fucking dollars doing product placement. And no, I've had people ask me to do teaching circuits, big fucking things, like big, like big shows of it. No, I'm not interested. I told you I'm stepping down. Not because any of you fucking nitwits have pushed me away. I've scheduled my time. I scheduled my departure. It's down to the fucking minute. 11.59 on Twitter. My last video will drop. November 11th, 2023. And this Twitter will not speak again. There will not be another Twitter space. There will not be another meme. There will not be another sarcastic trolling remark by me. There won't be any kind of dose. It won't be any kind of chart being shared. There won't be any links being posted. It won't be anything except for what's on the Twitter time feed as it is. And nothing's going to be deleted. My YouTube channel, it's going to stay just like that. Whatever videos are up there, are up there. And if I do anything going forward, it'll be right from my website. Or if I want to talk about something, it'll be on my SoundCloud, which ain't monetized. There is no future mentorship coming by me. I'm not going to be selling you a signal service. I'm not going to be doing master classes. I'm not going to run out of money and come back to you later on and say, hey, you want to do this? No. I want to build my kids up. I want to build them up. I want to spend time with my family because things are about to get rough. Probably in the next couple of weeks, really, to be honest with you. And you need to be thinking about how what you're doing right now is everything you're doing at this moment. Working towards you being financially independent. Are you able to make your own money apart from your job? Can you make money to sustain yourself without having to leave your house? I'm not saying rich now. It's not, I'm not saying that at all. How little is 10 handles with one contract and $2,500 in three weeks? From the time he started, he didn't trade every day. There was a, there was a, a few days where he didn't do anything. I told him, I said, wait to see if they pay you out. Because I was thinking that you know the whole thing was through deal. And they put a stay on that. So unless he was going to get paid, there's no sense of doing any more work to build up that account. So once he got confirmation that it was going to happen, then he started trading again. But how much, how, how less can you go below that? One contract, 10 handles. What are you doing, trade five handles? I'm not saying you can, but you know, that's a, to me, it's a little extreme. 
I think 10 handles is the, the minimum you should reach for. Not to say you can't have a algorithm that runs five handles because you can get into a trade, put a five handle limit order on it and just static price that all day long. You're gonna have a lot of commission costs, but you can make money with that. To me, it doesn't make any sense to do it. But I could sit there all day long, all day long and do hand, 10 handles up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down in the real run and against the run. But is that a good use of my time? No. Because if I can sit when I know the market's likely to move, I can let all that other fluctuation and price action move around, leave some on the table for everybody else, and I can have a life outside of these screens, outside of the charts, outside of the market, outside of social media, talking to you and making videos and commenting and talking to people and my private mentorship. Like it's, it, it, There's only so many minutes in a day. And I allot for them. And I want a more abundant supply of them doing things with my family. So when I see these people making bets, ICT is not going to leave. He's going to be here. I'm not going to be here, folks. I want you to understand that. I really sincerely want you to understand that I am absolutely walking. <laughs> okay, I'm walking with headphones on and I'm walking on sunshine because I have done what I said I was going to do. I've given you several models. They're very, very simple models too. I've made available to you my private mentorship core content lessons. There's no need for you to buy people that are trying to sell them. They're up there. There is no videos that's going to be made for my private mentorship group. I will never make them another video. You can't join it. And the only thing that we do is we chit chat that. That's it. That's all it is. It's not even all that eventful. They just have access to me. And I'm going to devote more time to them. I've asked them to be very patient with me while I did this. Because I wanted to stomp the guts out of the people that were in my mentorship. And they still are. Hiding like little fucking rats. And they're trying to sell my stuff. So if I make anything in that video format for them. It'll just be making them money. I'm not going to let them have that. That's why I don't produce and won't produce any more content for private mentorship. They can ask me questions, and that's all that it is. That's it. That's all that it is. And if you're stupid enough to buy that from somebody, you're, you're an idiot. Because everything that they've learned, everything that they have learned as a structure about mentorship and how I present the foundations to what it is I do, you already have free access. Month one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. That is up there. Right on YouTube for free. And I'm not taking them down. Once in a while, if I want to do the equivalent of what you see here as a Twitter space, and I want to encourage you, you know, on my website, I, I'll have a, a a present lecture. It'll just be something that, you know, I want to. Just reach out to y'all. It won't be monetized. It's just going to be text. And I know some of you want to hear it. Well, uh, you know, like I said, I have a life. And I want to get back to it. So I want you to think about this this weekend before we go into Monday and start a new week. When you start trading, you want to start with a very slow, controlled approach. And I think 10 handles, if you can't follow the approach to trying to do that for three months. What? Three months? And come on, three months ICT, that's too much. No, it ain't. Because if you can't submit yourself to three months doing the same thing over and over and over again, you don't have discipline. And if you don't, you'll forge it by doing it. You'll create discipline in yourself. It will keep you from over leveraging because you can only do one contract. It'll keep you from worrying about where to place your stop loss and when to move it and when to take partials. All that stuff is completely removed from it. You have the barest of essentials. My son was given no fat. It's as lean as it can be made lean. 
I used everything that he said that he was having an issue with. He wanted to have more contracts on, but he was afraid to take off partials. That's why he never did it. He didn't have one trade where he took a partial. Not one time. Not one time did he do it. Had he done it, he probably wouldn't have burned his account. Counts, plural. I think he did like seven of them. Burnt them. Trying to do the 150000 I said, stop doing the 150000 If you're going to do it, do it with the 50000 Because you can do everything you need to do in the beginning with that 50000 Because it's not even real 50000 Think of it like it's a $2,000 account. That's all it is. One mini using a high-frequency trading model. Technically, if we're going to be really, really dogmatic about it, it is over-leveraging. But it rewards him in a manner that I'm, I'm satisfied as his dad and as, as the mentor. I know what I gave him is solid as fuck. It's everyday trading. It's an every session trading model. It's an every hour model. It's there every 15 fucking minutes. How many 15 minutes happen in a session from beginning to end? It's a lot of fucking 15 seconds. I mean, 15 minutes, isn't it? <laughs> and if you get 10 handles each time, your commission cost is going to be up. But not so much that you can't be profitable. Much more profitable than anybody else's shit out there. I had automated stuff <laughs> that I wanted to share with him. But he's like, I need to know what it's doing and why it's doing it. And that was wonderful to hear. So that's what I did. I sat down one afternoon. I said, okay. List everything that you had issues with, what you feared, what you were afraid of, what you were trying to do, what your goals. And I took away all the goals because they were unrealistic, stupid fucking things from a, a little boy. That's what it was. And all of you that are adults, the ladies and men that are listening to me, all of your goals, they're little children dreams right now. You need to take that stuff away and go back to boot camp. This is where you start, humble beginnings. How can I protect myself from losing money to the greatest extent? How can I reduce the opportunity and make no allowance for failure to come in? How can I prevent myself from going on tilt? How do I keep myself from over trading, over leveraging, and worrying about how to move my stop loss and how to not to worry about where to take partials? Trade with one contract. Look for one setup. Have a model. Stick to that model. When you get your trade, if you lose and you take the full 12 handle hit, you stop. You don't do any more. If you win, you stop. You don't trade again. The next day, it's a reset. New set. New opportunity. Follow the plan. Follow the process. Keep doing it. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you stick to that? I'm challenging you as a community, my community. I don't give a fuck if you trade Mickey Mouse bullshit. If you're here and you're trying to learn from me, you have the rest of the next – what is it? Do we have – is it October? Okay, yeah, whatever. The rest of the year. The rest of the year, try to use your time seeing if you can look for one 10-handle run. Before I close this session, I'll repeat the rules for his, his model, okay? <clears throat> but for the ideal scenario for you to go forward is you have to remove the invitation for you to do more than is necessary. And when you discover how doing the least, which is what I've talked all the time. I talked about this. Do the least. Doing the least would beat the fuck out of the Robin's Cup placeholders right now. Doing the least could climb to the heights that those guys are sitting at right now. And they've worked all year long, and many of them haven't moved much because they're afraid of what they have right now. They don't want to lose it. Why? Because they don't know how to trade. They don't know how to trade. They found themselves up there doing things, and now because they're there in their positions, they're not willing to risk it. They're trusting 
which is what I told everybody. If you get in there and I have students that say they're going to go out there next year and try it. And what will happen is, is they're going to get in there and they're going to try to rush to get there real quick. And they're going to start thinking, I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to do more when you don't need to do more. You don't need to, you don't need to do that. You just need to stick to a process and a model that works for you. And when you get that clean slate in your mindset that all these things that you've piled onto yourself, I have to do this or it's not success. I have to make this much money or it's not success. I have to live up to this people on social media's expectations of me or I'm not going to be viewed as a successful ICT student. Fuck these motherfuckers. Fuck them. Even the people in our community are fucking too opinionated. Shut your fucking mouths. Shut the fuck up. Mind your own fucking business. You have no idea how impactful it is on people that are brand new, that are coming here, that are having a wonderful opportunity laid before them for free. And the toxicity fucking turns off immediately some of the people that would have otherwise had a change of life experience. See, some of you mistake what it is I do and what I'm responding to. These assets that talk shit about me, I'm not physically losing sleep over this, and I'm not selling anything, so they're not taking sales from me. The only thing it's doing is bringing more traffic to my YouTube channel. But I'm talking to the people that are on the fence that may read these people's bullshit, and I'm just challenging you, take a little bit of your time that I'm not making any money off of. Try what it is I've taught. If it doesn't work, believe whatever you want to believe about me. Believe whatever the fuck anybody else says about me that's negative. Believe all that shit. Go ahead and feel good walking away from it. I want you to feel no guilt. But what if you do try it and you discovered that these fucking clowns are just jealous and you have a change of life and you start finding a way for you to make your ends meet. What then? Will you have any time for people that's going to talk shit about me, you, and what you're trying to learn? Hell no. And that's what makes this community absolutely unbeatable. The folks that are really plugged in, the real parts of this community are the ones that are, they're the, they're the fibers that hold us together. Because they've done this. They've gone through the process of testing it and seeing it, and they know it's there. They see it. It's algorithmic. It's absolutely 100% manipulated, controlled, and you can time the fucking market on its basis. So there's no reason to be fearful of it. But everything outside of our community has an, has an issue with us because we're saying everything else is bullshit, and it is. It's a religion. Everything else out there is a religion. You're placing your faith and belief in something that has absolutely no bearing on why price and when price is going to do anything. If I was a fraud, the things I said to you and teach wouldn't be in your charts when they are. I would not be able to show you the examples. I sure as fuck wouldn't be risking real money with it. And what do you see? What have you experienced? What do you have in your hands that you can compare and contrast against everybody else's opinion versus what you see as fact? Except for me going into your house with you and trading your account right in front of you, I've done everything. Used real money. Used a real reputable broker. I went in and did TD Ameritrade. I went out there and showed you live talking every single candlestick. I did an execution in front of you live, and it did it to the fucking tick. I don't need to do that every day. I understand. I know the ploy. These people want to goat me into, I have to prove it. If we keep saying he can't and won't do it, he'll just have to do it. The fuck I do? I don't have to do a fucking thing. I've already done more than all of you. All of you. And when I talk like this, I'm talking to the people that are afraid to make a time investment. 
You see these people say, oh, nobody's making money. Well, look around, motherfuckers. They're all over the place. You see their face and you hear their voices and you see the companies paying them. But there's no fucking profitable students. Nobody's making money with this stuff. You're fucking liars, man. You're liars. And that's the wonderful thing about social media. It preys on the fucking laziness of people. Oh, if this person said that about it, that must be true. You allow. That's what social media has been designed for. It's been engineered for that very thing. It's brainwashing. And your fucking IQ level is a fucking testimony that you believe in everything that you fucking hear without testing it yourself. I have done everything I humanly can fucking do. I literally, I'm at my wit's end. I cannot do anything more than what I've done here by teaching you what my very own son is now using. And Top Step is not owned by me. I have no affiliation with them. They're not paying me any fucking money. I literally have nothing to do with them. I don't know anything about that fucking shit. Nothing. My son's in there trading a stripped down to the chrome, very simple approach. And I'm challenging you, you dickheads that are fucking unprofitable. They're trying to help, you know, hawk shit and sell stuff and courses and mentorships, all that other bullshit. You show me a hundred percent fucking winning day track record. Let's see who has the most winning fucking days. My son or your Mickey Mouse bullshit. Whatever the fuck it is. hundred percent win rate. Every single fucking day. That's where he's at. How many winning days in average will he have before he hits that $10,000 mark? You demand these, these fucking jokers prove that. It, my, my son's doing it through a third-party fucking uh, entity, Top Step. He's at my house. He logs in the fucking shit on a laptop, and right there it is. Showing you just like it is. If it's fake, if it's false, Top Step, you come out and fucking say it's not real. You come out and fucking say it. You can't fake these fucking results, folks. If it's being done on a live account, it's fucking right there. It's not demo. If it's being done and everybody's into this funded account shit, okay, wonderful. Maybe that's the reason why the Lord said and, and spoke to Cameron and said, I want to do that. Maybe that's his way of doing it because he moves in mysterious ways, right? Some of you need to see these things happen. Well, there it is. You can do what he's doing. Every single one of you can do this. Every single fucking one of you can do this. But you're in your own way. Some of you are in your feelings. Some of you are fucking scared to death. Some of you believe the bullshit, the drama fucking marketing these fucking people are doing because they can't draw attention to their fucking channels without having this kind of stuff. Where's the risk? Where the fuck is the risk for you to just spend a couple weeks? Just spend a couple weeks. Commit to four weeks. I promise you, if you spent the four weeks doing what I'm telling you to do, you'll be convinced that it's worthwhile sticking with it. And it costs you nothing. And if it's fraud, if it's fucking fake, it doesn't work. If it fails, show us what you did. So that way we can see that you made an honest attempt instead of going out on social media. Like I had a student that fucking left. Tried to do algo box. He come out there and did all his bullshit because Vinny said, do this, do this, do this, not give you free access and blah, blah, blah. He bought his little fucking computer, had all his fucking charts up there, and he was showing his market replay reports, and he's talking all kinds of shit. Well, guess what? He's turned his fucking video channel off. All his videos are fucking made private because I guarantee you, like I told him privately, I wish you luck at what you're doing, but I already know what your problem is is you. And where's algo box success story in that? Crickets, motherfucker. Crickets. Because it was the student's baseline issue himself. Some of you are just not going to be able to do this. It matters not who's teaching you what, period. But that's the discovery. You have to find out what your character flaws are. You have to go through that beginning process. And some of you have to go through that a lot longer because you don't want to let go of the painful fucking problematic issues that are plaguing you and preventing you from finding the fucking success that you think you deserve and want. But you're never going to obtain it because you can't get out of your own fucking way. That's the reality. That's the unfucking sugar-coated fucking way of telling you. And some of you get offended. I don't fucking care because it's the reality. I would want someone to tell me this is the way it is. Michael, this is, you're getting ready to do this. It's going to be hard. This is where you're going to fuck up. 
Then let's go through a process of finding out where your fuck up problems, these root core issues. You have to find out where they are and be fucking humbled by them in the beginning before you put money at risk. Humble fucking beginnings. How do you build equity from humble beginnings? You've learned. You have learned who the fuck you are. And guess what? You're all fuck ups. I was a fuck up in the beginning. And guess what? You learn. Oh, I keep making the same mistake. How do I know I am keep making this mistake? Because I'm journaling it. I'm recording what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, why I see this. Why do I think it's going to appear in the chart? Am I mad about something? Am I going into the marketplace on an emotional high? Everything feels good. And I feel like, well, you know, I mean, I can't lose. Let me go in there. All those things or characteristics are going to, they're going to repeat. And you need to identify what they are because if they're hurting you, you need to go right to the root cause of what causes that. And if you have that in your mind before you press the button, it's better for you not to take the trade then. Until you wrestle these demons into submission. Otherwise, you'll talk yourself into doing shit that you shouldn't be doing. And talking yourself out of the things you should be. Folks, I'm sorry, but they don't make fucking trading psychology books that's going to tell you this. But this is exactly what the fuck you need to hear. You're listening to somebody that went through it. And I begged everybody that had more experience than me. Please direct me to books. Direct me to teachers. Direct me to somebody that knows how to conquer all this stuff. I'm wrestling all these things and I can't figure it out. Well, just like I promised you, if you journal, <laughs> you're making the fucking best fucking trading book ever. And you're writing it yourself. And it's strange because it should never be shared with anybody. That makes it a treasure. That makes it an heirloom that you can pass on to your children. That that was a time capsule every day of your life. What you were thinking that day. The decisions that you were making that day that helped frame the legacy that they're living off of now. In the future. That's a unique experience that people can't get the same from a photograph. You can have photographs and old movies and eight millimeter films and you know all kinds of shit. But it's totally different when you see the blueprints of what your future family is going to live off of. What you did, the engineering moments of how you put all this stuff together for you to make it work for you. How you framed every decision that you're making financially for you and your future and your family's future and the legacy wealth that you're creating. But you think it's something you shouldn't do. It's a time waster. Oh, it's this, that, and the other thing. I promise you, folks, I promise you this. Anybody worth their salt as a trader making serious money, they're journaling. And they did journal. Nobody swings by the seat of their pants and just says, well, you know, I'm just going to wing it. There can be people that do that. Gamblers come into the casinos every year and take down big hauls. But are they doing it every year, every month? No. They're just a flash in a pan. Just everything lined up for them right then. Do you want your, you want your trading to be like that? Do you want your success to be hinged on the basis of a lottery-like win? Some of you said, I don't give a fuck how it comes as long as I can get it, right? <laughs> I'm just cut from a different cloth. I want to feel good that I earned it. I want to feel good that I'm teaching you a method that can be transferable. And I absolutely have proven it's transferable. I have people all around the world, and many of them making serious salaries off of trading now. And they're just underneath the cusp of becoming millionaires. And guess what? You're not going to see ever an algo box you ever come out with proof that they're a millionaire. You're never going to see a $600,000 algo box profitable trader in real money, not market replay reports. Vinny, I'm sorry that I have to talk this way to you. I never wanted to do these things. And when we were talking privately, I told you all these things. I said, I'm not the person you're making me out to be. I invited you to have me and my wife share a dinner with you a year ago. And I told you I didn't have nothing to do with Shane Fields doing whatever the hell he did that day. And I thought that was a skit. I thought that that was something that was cooked up by you. 
And then when that guy started talking all that shit, I was like, what the hell? That was nuts. So I'm anxious to see when you get to court with that whole show. And when you hear that man tell you I had absolutely nothing to do with that, I absolutely expect an apology because you have a title on one of those videos, that very video. You're claiming that I'm a child molester. Do you have any idea the, the liability that you have doing that? I want you to understand something. And I'm making this public again. I had nothing to do with that. Zero. And the things that you're spinning off on about, absolutely baseless and untrue. I would never do that. Never. The things that you've said about my family and my children are absolutely heinous and they're untrue. And you've done more damage to your image and your brand than I ever could do. You need to take stock in what it is you're doing. You might be making a little bit of money off of revenue, but that shit's going to dry up. It's all going to dry up. And once it's on the internet, it never really goes away. And your children, as precious and beautiful as they are right now, they're going to grow up. And they're going to see these things that people are saying about you. And it's going it, it to, you don't see it or feel it right now. But that shame is going to be very, very deep in its cuts. I did not one time have any intentions of doing anything to bring you any kind of harm or shame. That's never happened. That doesn't mean I wouldn't whip your fucking ass in a trading competition. So I know, and you fucking know it too. I would dismantle you. You did not join that Robbins Cup, and you know damn fucking well that the shit you've put out there, supposedly by Joe Robbins or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, that, that, that guy did not fucking say I went out there and blew four or five, six fucking accounts or whatever. That never fucking happened. That never fucking happened. All this stuff is. Bullshit. You need to take stock in what you're doing. There's, I'm sure, I'm certain that you're taking notes on what I'm teaching. I'm absolutely certain. Everything that you have been doing for the last five or seven years has been inspired by me, whether you fucking want to admit it publicly or not. You've done it a few times in your live streams where you say, oh, yeah, the J-Hook, that's ICT's optimal trade entry. Yep. I even told you to code this stuff. If you can do it, I have users, or well not users, but I have students that would use your shit if you could really do it and make it consistent. Take all that shit off your charts, all that bloated bullshit. You're getting there. It's slowly happening. But the things that you're building your stuff on, it's all bullshit. Incorporate the stuff. I'm, I'm not even saying market it with my stuff. You don't, you don't ever have to do that. You never have to come out in public to say it. You don't even have to say it to me in an email. You don't have to say nothing to me. Just do it. And I promise you, your shit will start working. And people that want that crutch of being able to go out there and try to do something and it's built on sound logic. Look at the fucking thing my son's using right now. You trade all these little micro couple ticks types of trades and over leverage them. Take the over leveraging away, build it with one contract basis, automate it. It has a negative R. It doesn't matter. That consistently will drive transactions. And if you automate that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you people right now are sitting there thinking, you know, ICT, you're right. If you can make that work, I would like to have something like that. And again, like I told you in the past, I don't want any royalties off of anything. Nothing. But you went on this fucking vendetta, man, for, for nonsense because I didn't come out and defend you. I barely even fucking knew you were. And it's fucking creepy as fuck that you act like we've been friends since childhood and I backstabbed you. I have no idea who the fuck you were, man. But the shit that you're spewing is lies, man. It's fucking lies. <clears throat> so anyway let's cover Cameron's model and then I'm going to close this one because it's about time for me to grab something to eat when I sat with Cameron I told him I said look to keep you from over trading to keep you from having um, 
the issues and worrying about where your stop loss should be moved or where partial should be taken, you can only trade with one contract. And initially, I wanted him to trade with a micro. That, that's what I wanted him to do. And it wasn't about the amount of money. It was about him learning discipline and seeing the, the compounding effect of doing one thing well and just letting it happen over time. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Because if you do very, very well and you can find 10 handles very easy, very quickly, go in and find it. This is applicable to Forex, by the way. I know everybody likes to ask me questions like, I didn't fucking say this before, but it works in Forex the same way. Any market. It's the same thing. Liquidity and inefficiencies are the thing. Everything else is nonsense. Everything else is fucking bullshit. The idea of anticipating intraday volatility, that's what his model is. He's not even using the weekly bias. He's not using a daily bias. He's not looking at anything except for what is it, what's existing right now in price action. Now think about how easy this is. See, you're already going to doubt it because I'm not telling you to use the weekly bias and I'm not telling you to worry about daily bias because all of you think that you're going to be extremely profitable if if you know what the daily bias is that's bullshit because I had students that could send me an email and I made them prove to me that because they would say ICT I know the daily bias and um, blah 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 but if I could know the right PD array on this particular model I would be profitable okay well I demanded them okay before the trading session opened I need you to send me an email Tell me what the bias is going to be. And they were incorrect. So they're bullshitting me. Okay. I have students that will lie to me as their teacher. And I'm, I'm fully capable of accepting the fact that there are going to be people out there that are going to lie and say that my shit doesn't work because they aren't doing it correctly. That's why I said, bring your receipts. If you know that you have tried, show me that you have tried. Show me what you have been journaling and showing me five fucking pages of scribbling is not journaling. That's somebody hurrying up trying to put something together to make it look like it. Because on face value, people's attention spans are very short. They're going to say, oh, yeah, he, I, I saw he journaled. What did he fucking journal? What did she journal? What did they journal? What were they looking for? What were they measuring? What were they fucking trying to do a case study on? What model are they trying to employ? Are they changing shit all the time when they go into the marketplace? Or are they looking for one particular thing? So to keep the whole bias issue out of the equation, to simplify it, just trading intraday volatility. That means whatever the market's going to do from the highest high and the lowest low that it will form that day, which you don't even need to know that. I have tools that will do that. I've proven it publicly that I can fucking tell you what they are. And you watch me trade them. You don't have anybody else out there in any fucking trading community that's ever proven that. Just me. Now, intraday volatility, that means you're going to be looking for an hourly or basically a 60 minute swing high or a swing low that is likely to move to. It's in close proximity to it. It's been going up for the last couple hours or so. And it's just getting real close to an obvious 60 minute high. If it's not doing that, Go down to a 15-minute time frame. Look for a swing high that it might be gravitating to. If it's gravitating towards that 15-minute high, and real important, here's the main fil here's the filter, folks. Okay, this is the fucking part that you're not gonna do. And when you fucking lose, you're gonna swear up and down that it fucking fails. <laughs> On a one or five-minute chart, there, if you're bullish, it must show a swing low taken, and then re. Reject and go higher. Whatever time frame, whether it be the one minute or five minute, whatever time frame that swing low is breached, it goes below it. It only needs to go by one tick. Doesn't need to close below it either. This needs to go below it. That time frame that has the swing low, it must have a candle close up after it takes that low. Once it does that, you immediately drop down to a 30-second chart. But I can't have a 30-second chart. Then you can't fucking trade this model. Just apply it to a higher time frame. Instead of a 30-second, use the one-minute and use the 15-minute and one-hour chart. Everything's scalable. 
But I'm giving you something that you can test a lot. There's lots of examples doing this throughout the week from the beginning of trading on Sunday to Friday's close. There's many instances of, of you going in and going to back test this and have no bias. And you're going to have losing trades. It's OK. But you have to have whatever that time frame is, the one minute or the five minute, there has to be a stop run. One of the first primary principles I taught when I stepped out on baby pips is the real move will not happen. The dynamic price runs where there's magnitude and, and delivery and speed, that will happen after a pool of liquidity is engaged. That means if the market's bullish, if you think it's going to go higher, I think it's going to draw up to some level, whether it be a high, a relative equal high, uh, inefficiency above market price, whatever that is up there that you're framing as a reason for it to want to go up, it's far more likely to get up there with conviction and speed if there has been a short-term run on liquidity that's below the marketplace in the form of stops or sell-side liquidity because the market's going to go down to allow traders to buy those stops. What traders? Smart money. The algorithm is cowtailing to them. It's, a, it's, a hand, it's called handshaking. The market reprices to levels to allow handshaking to occur. That's the real term. That's exactly what's going on. And when those orders are being provided to the participants that are on the sideline, you're not seeing their fucking orders on the DOM, the depth of market. It's not DOME, by the way. DOM, when that is showing those numbers and stuff, their orders are not sitting there. Smart money's orders are not sitting there. They're not. They're not fucking sitting there, folks. That's why I'm laughing at you when you're fucking using it and you're, and you're asking me, show me your order book. Show me your level two data. That's fucking bullshit. That's all bullshit. It's spoofing. Their orders are immediately piped in. Immediately. They're not sitting around waiting for you to read them. If they have their orders the size of their fucking orders and the volume of their fucking orders, if they were sitting out there where you could see them, you could really read sentiment then. They're never going to fucking let you do that. Why the fuck is it so hard for you not to see this? Because people on CNBC and people that are allowed to talk on CNBC that have no fucking real clout on Twitter. <laughs> I've been on CNBC, so therefore my opinion matters. Get the fuck out of here. When it drops down to take the sell side when you're bullish, Whatever that time frame is that has the swing load that it pierces and goes below, as soon as it does that, you have to wait for one candle to be up close. Once it does that, once it does that, then and only then do you drop down to the 30-second chart and you wait for a fair value gap to form and then you buy. The best one is the first. But you can take continuous buys on a 30-second every time it creates a fair value gap or – um, trades to a down close candle, you treat it like a bullish order block. And you can turn that single one contract model over time. If you submit the three months of doing it, you build discipline and you aim for that liquidity. But here's the thing you might be just like my son and you're scared. You can't hold a trade. Okay. Best case scenario, put a limit order at 15. 15 handles, there it is. So you're risking 12 to make 15. That's not bad. It's a little bit better than one. But most of the time, my son has 10, 11, maybe 11 and a half, sometimes 12 handles. And he moves his limit order around if he ever uses it. Sometimes he's honest with me. He says, Dad, I don't have a limit order because I I'm afraid if I put it at 10 and it goes to 15, I'll be upset about that. So he's still not disciplined in that regard yet. He's, he's growing, but this model allows him that growth. It protects him from losing a lot because he can only trade with one contract. He can only take one trade per day. He can only do one thing. And it keeps him in a tight little bubble where he can only – like a Petri dish. Okay, I've taken him, <laughs> and I've put him inside of a Petri dish. I said, okay, this is all you can fucking do. You can bloom and grow all you want, but you're never getting into that fucking Petri dish until I tell you new parameters. And so far, his growth has been perfect. It's showing him incremental gains. It's realistic gains. I think, honestly, if everybody out there, even people that hate me, those results are consistent, aren't they not? They are. They're not perfect. 
He's got an 80% strike rate in terms of his trades. At 18 years old, that's fucking phenomenal. That's fucking phenomenal. I don't give a fuck where you came from. That's good shit. But see, you are equating it to some of the things that I've done or you see other people do, and they may not even be true. Don't look at the amount of money as the, as the reason to say something is good or bad. Because what if you were making $250 a day? That's going to mean something to you, isn't it? It's going to mean a whole hell of a lot to you. Whatever you're aiming for, as far as the draw on liquidity, over time, you'll learn to hold it a little bit more. See, he has to submit to this for a few more weeks before he's allowed to go for 20 handles. Because he's not going to have, right now he doesn't have it yet. He doesn't have the wherewithal to be able to hold the trade for 20 handles because he's nervous. He's afraid. He's expecting one of those weird, you know, crazy, big down close candles or wicks that come against him real quick. He's expecting it. That's what he's having in his mind. He thinks they're going to jump out like a boogeyman. And you're laughing and smiling thinking, that's exactly how I feel every time I'm in a trade. And you know how you beat that? You know how you beat that boogeyman? You just constantly engage and you desensitize yourself to it. And you see, how many times does it really manifest itself? It might happen once a month. If you're following rules, if you're bullish and a stop hunt just takes place on sell stops, chances are they just engaged that liquidity and smart money just went in and added more. Then the algorithm reprices higher. Not because they bought it, not because of the buying pressure. The handshaking element that the algorithm does, it delivers to a pool of liquidity. It, not, it doesn't know how many orders are there. It can't know how many orders are there because it's always changing. Orders are coming in and being pulled, spoofed, putting in, putting them out. Like it, it, those, th that's not a factor when it was coded. It's just where will they be? At what time are we interested in going there? That's how the algorithm is coded. So when that handshaking event takes place and allows the liquidity to be engaged, whether it be purging or engineering new liquidity, that element brings with it a context of what pr price action should do next. So if you know the likelihood of those stops above relative equal highs, below relative equal lows, or above a single high or below a single low, you're framing where the liquidity is that the algorithm will refer to. And then you sit there and you wait. Which one is it gravitating to? Whatever one it gravitates to or starts moving towards closest you can use this model and you can take 10 handles. It happens every day. But you want 50 handles. You want 100 handles. You want to make $10,000 in your combine challenge. You want to do 15 contracts over leveraged and stress the entire fucking time that you're in the trade worrying about what happens if it doesn't work out. But man, if it really does work out, I made the maximum amount of money. You want to live your life as a trader like that? Where everything is a fucking do or die? That's not what professionals do. They go in there and they do something that's absolutely fucking boring using a leverage amount that is realistic. It's sane. That means it's not insane. <laughs> and they are respecting the risk because they are not perfect. They're not perfect. Cameron has lost a few. I don't know how many exact. I got to get the numbers off of them. The idea of a perfect winning record. He'll lose that eventually. By having a 100% strike rate on the day with an 80% plus win rate, even though that the average profit is small because of the context of the, the stats, he's averaging $250 to $240 a day. Do you earn that at your job? Do you earn that in your trading right now? Do you feel confident that on Monday that you're going to be able to make $200 plus absolutely assured that it's going to happen? Do you have that feeling in, in, your, in your fiber, in your being as a trader, as a student, as someone that's learning how to do this? Are you that confident that you know absolutely that you know you can walk in there next week 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, walk out of there with two hundred plus dollars and confident that what you're doing is absolutely sound logic. It's not gambling. Do you have that right now? He's learning that. He's at that point where he's discovering it. And watching him walk around, he walked differently. He walked differently. He had his shoulders back. He felt good about himself. And for a while, he didn't look that way. And when Before he started doing this stuff and trading and before he lost his girlfriend, he always had that, that bounce in his step. He's athletic. He's bigger than I am. He's fucking like a linebacker. He's huge. But I watched him dip down. His self-esteem went down a little bit. He didn't have that, that fire in him because he thought he was going to walk out here and conquer the world with combines and shit. And he discovered that there's a whole lot of things that he brought to it, and it's not easy. It takes time to figure yourself out. And you don't need a whole lot of things and bells and whistles to work with to do an experiment to discover where your character flaws are. And you have to do that in your humble beginnings. Quietly, without the in interference of other people's opinions and judgments. Telling you you're wasting your time or you're going to fail or what you're doing is fake or you're learning from a fraud. or All that stuff is meant to distract you. That's how the enemy works. That's exactly what he does. And you listen to it and you ignore all the evidence around you where it does work and people are making real money. And there's an, there's no way of escaping the fact that that what Cameron's doing is being proven by another entity apart from me. Oh, do a combine ICT if you can trade. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. Look at what my students are doing, and look at my young buck, my eighteen year old that. Thought he knew everything in the beginning. <laughs> and now he's discovering, wow, this is a lot easier than I thought. That's exactly the right mindset. And then he has his shoulders pulled back now. He feels good about himself. Not arrogance. It wasn't arrogance. He's had arrogance. And I told you before, if this boy learns what I know and wants to do what he says he wants to do or what he was wanting to do, he is going to be a menace. He's going to have a whole lot of fucking haters. He might be drawing too much negative energy on himself. And maybe this is a way that God said, hey, you know, you, in his development, it'll change him. Change him for the better. Not trying to be like that, like in that, in that aspect. But moving forward, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to do 90 days of the same thing. One contract, one mini with a demo. Looking for it with the model idea that I just gave you here. It's stripped down, folks. There's, there's nothing that you can deduct from it anymore. It's simple. It's the simplest as there is. There's nothing else simpler than that. If you can watch the market in the morning, you look for it there. If you can't watch it in the morning, watch it in the afternoon. It's occurring all day long. Multiple, multiple times. He's discovering that he has more than one setup per session. Dozens of setups per day. I said that plurally. <laughs> There's a lot of them there. And that's what these algorithms do all day long. They pipe their orders in. Boom, 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 boom. And they're sliding themselves in between everybody else's orders and buying and selling. And that volume comes in. There it is. Every single one of you, if you do this, number one, you're going to build a lot of understanding about who you are. You're going to discover that you're not as patient as you thought you were. You're not going to be surprised when you see how hard it is to stick to this one idea. It's very hard. But you will not be able to stick to anything else risking more money when that emotional stimuli and, cur and courage is 
diminished when you take a loss when you're trading with the largest leverage. You feel bad. You feel regret, remorseful, but not so much that you keep from doing it again because you'll do it again. This teaches you to fall in love with the process and fall in love with you as the person who you're encouraging and grooming to be the best version of. You're reducing all of the negative stimuli down to the bare minimum of what you have to concern yourself with. One stop loss. It's 12 handles. That's it. 12 handles. If it's moving 12 handles, you're absolutely wrong. And you want to be out. And once you do and you get stopped out, you stop. Next day, it's a reset. Start all over again. Not reset your account. <laughs> reset your mindset about, okay, I'm going in looking for setup. And you're using the draw on liquidity as the basis for where the market should be reaching for. And over time, and for the folks that feel like they can just go right in there and try to do the draw on liquidity and just use this model as the entry for the draw, you're cheating yourself. Because your expectations is you're eventually going to want to trade with 15 contracts when you can afford to do so. You won't be able to hold that trade until you work through one contract and you hold to 10 to 15 contracts. Oh, I'm sorry, handles rather. And once it does that, you get out and you learn to see, does it keep going further or does it retrace and go against where your stop was, would have been? And then later on, resume going higher because there's going to be times where that's going to happen. Cameron will have that happen to him. It will happen to him. And I'm interested to share with you his observations. I will sit with him. You will hear his voice. He will talk with me and you as an audience member, listening to what he felt in contrast to what it's been like watching him build it up. But don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself the opportunity to grow trusting how to hold on to a trade. This is exactly the perfect learning environment. How to teach yourself discipline, patience, how to follow a model and a process, adhering to it. Don't, doing any, don't do anything extra beyond that. Don't over leverage your account because you can only do one contract. And kill the whole myth of high R multiple trades is the way to go or you can't be profitable. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Every high-frequency trading algorithm has no fucking concern for R multiples because they're going in there and they're taking bites. They're taking bites of it. They're not out there fucking trying to take the whole day down. They're just taking a bite. And this, 10 handles, is a bite. And there's a lot of that on the plate every single day. And you only need one of those 10 handles to carve out a model that can make your whole life better. What would 200 bucks a day do for you? Am I selling you a Lambo lifestyle? Fuck no. Am I showing you how you can get your groceries paid for in a month? Absolutely. Am I helping you figure out how you can get that car note covered because you just had a separation and there's now less money coming in? You got, went from a two income household now to one and what you were feeling confident it, together you guys could do it but now they said they don't want to be with you anymore and you have fear and anxiety and depression kicking in how am i going to do it i got something i got to take care of this is one way you can do that this is one way you can feel empowered and feel confident that through this the lord can increase you But you have to submit yourself to the process. You have to submit to a rule-based idea. And there is none simpler than this. It'll conquer everything that you're wrestling with. Fear of missing out. Because you're going to discover, man, these things happen all day long. Yeah. I missed that one. Oh, no. No, you'll never have that feeling. You'll never have that feeling. I never look at a market and say, fuck. Man, I missed that fucking move. Where the fuck was I thinking? Why, why, why not? Why did I do that? Why did I do this one? Why? It doesn't happen. You don't hear me talk like that, man. You don't hear me say none of that shit. It's boring as fuck because it's the same shit every day. Same time, same channel. <laughs> 
Precision Incorporated. And it's empowering when you have that. It, you know, when you share your feelings about it to everyone else that can't do it, it's going to seem like arrogance. It's going to seem like pride. Oh, look at this guy. He's so boastful. His ego so big. You know what the fuck it is? I'm confident. I don't talk in terms that you're used to using with yourself. Oh, I don't know why I can't do this. I fear I'm going to miss this one. I should have did this. I should have that, that. No, oh, that's the feeding terms. That's, that's, a, that's a vocabulary that a failure fucking holds on to. You choose to hold those words near and dear to your heart. I don't. I'm more than an overcomer. I am a conqueror. I am not teaching you to be complacent with mediocrity. You're not destined for that. You're not destined for that. The fact that you're still listening to me is a testimony to that because you're getting fed. And you feel it. You're getting sustenance from it. You're being reminded that you are not what you've been telling yourself you are as a failure. You're not a failure. You're in progress. You are work in progress. They needed to put a construction sign out in front of your house under construction because your shit's about to change. Everything's about to change. Your perspective has to be the first thing that does change because until you can see it, until you cast forth a vision, write it down, make it plain, make it clear, and pursue it and overtake it. That's what you have to do. You have to have these humble beginnings. You have to plan it out. That way you have a reason to do or not do something and not be reactive. And over time, you will discover you are disciplined. You are patient. You will wait for your setup. You will not predict your setup. You're anticipating it, and when it's laid before you, you enter it. Your stop is absolutely entered, and you're not fearful that it gets hit. Over 90 days, you'll look back. How many times did you get stopped out? How many times did you lose? What was your net profit? How many times did you have winners? When did the winners really work? What were the losers? Why did they fail? What time of day? What was the economic calendar like the day before, the day of, and the day after on the days that you lost? What was it like that on the days that you won? How did you feel when you lost? How did you feel when you won? What fears and concerns did you have? You journal all that. But you do not journal it in a way where you kick yourself down and make yourself feel defeated. Oh, I fucked that up. Oh, this is bullshit. I'm never going to make this work. I'm wasting my time doing this. Everything is an opportunity for you to encourage yourself, cheerlead yourself. That's exactly what your journal is for. Because nobody is going to be there to do it for you. Nobody. You get that feeling when I'm talking to you like this, but it stops as soon as you stop listening to this. And you go back to your regular world, think about everything you're doing when you start trading it next week. You're going to be arm wrestling fear, uncertainty, and the looming sense that you're going to fail and I'm probably going to be wasting my time and I'm going to feel demoralized if that's the case. That's all what everybody feels when they're trading. You're first finding yourself, everybody thinks and feels just like that. It's normal. And you're looking for some way to avoid that. And I'm telling you, you got to walk right up to it, flick it in the fucking nose and say, I'm not deterred by you, bitch. I'm here for it. And I'm walking through you. And once you do that, with fear of missing out, lack of discipline, impatience, greed, what do you got left? All upside. All upside. Does it mean you'll never have a losing trade? No. It just means when you do, it's fucking nothing. It's a paper cut. Who gives a shit? But when you make everything about image and make everything about stats and keeping up with the Joneses and outperforming this person and that person, you have made an elevated trading to a level that's not required. You already are compounding the difficulty in something that need not be added to. But social media does that. It creates competitions when there is none. It presents drama for you to worry about when there shouldn't be any.
Humble beginnings, folks. All of you have the opportunity to have that now, even if you've been profitable, even if you've been contemplating, you know, trying to do something new with the stuff I teach and you're, you're already doing things on your own, doing something else. Try this model. Try this approach to doing it, studying it, seeing how people can grow, develop with the least. And I want to inspire you to think about where you might be next year if you've done this project with yourself. If you walk forward with it for the next 90 days and you submit yourself to this process. That doesn't mean don't do everything else that you're already doing, but th at least try this. Just try it. That's all. Just try it. And see what you learn about yourself. See what you discover about how you view price and how you look at yourself in terms of KPIs. Okay, These measurement statistics that, that help you determine how well you're doing in progress. And imagine what you'll feel when you get to the point where after 90 days, you can start doing it with two contracts. Do that for two weeks. And then after two weeks, if you're successful doing it there, then go to three contracts for two weeks. If you're finding the same routine and rhythm there, after those two weeks, go up one more contract. And you do that continuously until you get to 10 contracts and then plateau there and spend a few months doing just that. At that point, folks, You've literally are at a level that you're in the upper 5% of traders. Like you are doing numbers and consistency that any institution would love, would fucking love for you to be able to prove that you can do that with their funds. Over time, it grows more and more and more, but you have to allow for the incremental growth. You don't want it right now because it's uncomfortable. It takes a long time. It's like anybody wants to go to a gym and work out. Maybe over the holidays, they, they put on a couple pounds and they want to get shredded because spring will be here soon. They want to start working out. They might join the gym. They might go there for the first few times and all of a sudden, uh, I ain't going to the gym today. I got something else to do. And then all of a sudden, they're not doing anything except for paying for the gym membership. And they're gaining more weight, getting more unhealthy. And the whole time, they're lying to themselves in the mirror Eh, it ain't that bad looking. My love handles ain't that bad. Eh, my shirts feel a little bit more tighter than they used to be. That's all right. I, who cares? I'm married, right? Yeah, I make all these excuses. And that incremental movement away from your goal, you're willing to accept those, but you're not willing to put in the effort to do these incremental gains and goal movement further away to a goal that's worth holding and striving for. It's funny how that works. It's just like when you hold your trades that are losing, you're willing to hold it. You're willing to hold on to that trade that's a losing trade. You know it's a losing trade, but you just can't let go of it. There's something in you that's holding you back from just taking that loss. You need to discover what that is. I don't know what it is. I'm not equipped to be able to do that because it's different for all of us. Me, when I was new, I didn't want to let go of a losing trade because I wanted to be right. Because everybody around me said I was wrong about trying to attempt it, to think that I was going to be better than anybody else in our family, to feel like I was going to be a success story because everyone around me was a failure. My friends, my family members, none of us except for my aunt, uh, one aunt, she, she was the only one that graduated high school. Well, my uncle, obviously, he went to college and got a business degree later on, finished it in his 40s, and was managing a KFC then tried to be a stockbroker and failed. He was the one that made the money in the 83 with sugar. He bought the condominium down in Ocean City. He was the one that was talking to me when I was 14, 15, and 16 years old. When the only thing I was interested in was martial arts, and he was trying to tell me, go to school, get a good job as an electronic technician, and learn how to trade futures and options. Michael, the richest people in the world trade futures and options. And at 14, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck at 14 years old about that. But I was being groomed. I was being groomed back then. Everything was being laid out in front of me, and I was resisting it even then, which is understandable. But you're being presented the same thing right now, and you're going to make excuses why you don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. 
No, I, I'll just I'm just gonna stick to his silver bullet. This, this is better to do that. This is silver bullet. Silver bullet is simply a run to a fair value gap towards a liquidity pool. That's it. That's a silver bullet. You're because it gives you every ingredient to a trade that you're looking for. That's why I dubbed it silver bullet. You're all looking for a silver bullet way of trading. And I thought to myself, you know what? I say that so many times, critiquing their expect expectations as a as a new trader. I'm just going to create that model and we'll call it that. And that's why Silver Bullet was named that. It answers all your fucking problems if you just do everything I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I tell you to avoid. If you do those things, it answers everything for you. It gives you a time when to trade. There's no guesswork. It's going to form in that hour. It's going to run towards a liquidity pool that's obvious to you if you study inside that hour, what is it gravitating to? What 15 minute or hourly high or low is it reaching for? Who gives a fuck what the bias is? If it allows for at least where you see that fair value gap forming, if it is allowing you at least 15 handles, it's tradable. And it need not have the 15 handles to reach to that pool of liquidity it's aiming for, or you believe it's aiming for. It just gives you the opportunity to take 10 handles out. I'm afraid to hold to the targets. Okay. Don't hold to the target. Take something out before. Isn't that what a fucking partial is? Yes. Why are you arguing about it? It's money. It's 100% fucking profitable. Why are you arguing it? Why are you wrestling with me about taking fucking money out of the marketplace? Why are you arguing about being fucking paid? Do you go to your boss and say, fuck you. Fuck you. You will not pay me on fucking payday. I'm not taking it today. I'm going to fucking wait until next week. I'm not catching my fucking check, bitch. Stop trying to give me money. That's the same mentality you're fucking having wrestling with me. I don't want to take partials. That's stupid. Okay, stay fucking broke. Stay a fucking unprofitable student. Stay an unprofitable fucking trader. Keep doing shit fast backwards and fucking doing it wrong. Why are you watching me if you got it all figured out? Why the fuck are you trying to watch my shit if you got it all figured out? You're going to wrestle me about taking partials. It's a crutch. It's to help you grow so that way you can do full pools. Full pools are when you get into the trade and you hold for your targets. No partials. That only, that only comes when you have conviction about what it is you're trading. You understand you as the trader. You're not worried about doing it wrong. You're not worried about getting stopped out. You're not worried about anything. You trust that model's delivering. I'm afraid that most of you do not want to accept the fact that it's going to take you a long time to get to that point. Far much more time than you think it will when you first start. And that's a normal feeling. That's a normal experience for people to do that in trading. And only the people that wrestle themselves into submission say, you know what? Maybe this is going to take a little bit longer than I wanted to. Maybe it's going to take me a little bit longer to start taking bigger money profits out of the marketplace than I expected it to. But this is a worthwhile engagement. And if I'm not going to do this, what else am I going to do? Am I going to be able to make more money from the job I'm working right now? Are they going to give me $200 more a day in pay? Is your boss going to give you $100 more a day because you need it? Because you need it to make ends meet better than they meet right now or for the first time. Fuck no, he's not going to do that or she. They're not going to do that for you, folks. So you have to do what? You have to take the initiative to do it on your own. And the only thing I'm submitting to you is just another way of doing it. It isn't the only way. It's just one simple way that my son himself at 18 years of age with no experience being profitable prior to. You're seeing it happen right now. Real time. Every single time there's an adjustment in his, in his equity, I share it with you. We logged into his account, showed you his day by day progress. It's absolutely undeniable. It's real. It's not faked. It's not a rented MT4 server. He's making it work for himself. And while, yes, $2,500 is not a lot of money, but guess what? To an 18-year-old, it fucking is. It is. And what happens if it amounts to me with losing trades? He only does that over the course of a full month. Is that failure? I would submit that it's not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that failure. 
What happens if his strike rate drops down to 50%, but he's still profitable $1,500 a month? Is that failure? No. But some of you would criticize that and say, oh, it's only 50-50. But you're not making any money. You're talking shit. That's what social media does. It invites assholes to communicate with you when it was unsolicited. It makes an invitation to ignorant people that are only interested in seeing you become miserable like them. You're going to discover when I leave in November that your best learning comes after that, doing everything I told you to do and avoiding the things I told you to avoid. Your best learning is coming after November 11th. You don't see it. Some of you are fearful and you're, you're like, I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay here. I'm encouraged by you. Blah, blah, blah. That, that, that's the problem. That's the problem. You're all comfortable in the nest. I'm kicking you the fuck out of here. You're, you're not supposed to live with me forever. I'm not supposed to be with you forever. You, I taught you how to do it. I taught you how to fly. And when the mom and the dad says it's time for that eagle to get the fuck out of the nest, they boot their fucking ass out. Let me tell you a, a quick story and I'm going to end it. Eagles are very interesting animals. Very interesting animals. You know, they have their vision. They have telescopic vision. That means they can stand on one field goal post of a football field and zoom in on a quarter, a 25 cent piece in the U.S. currency. They can see that laying on the ground at the other end, 100 yards away. And people say there's no creator. <laughs> well, an eagle, it goes through periods of its life where it looks for a mate. And when it finds a mate, it mates for life, one mate. It doesn't it doesn't go around and whore around with anybody else. It finds a mate. And the female eagle, what she'll do is she'll she'll fly around and see if the male eagle's going to be committed to stay with her. And eventually, when she feels like she is willing to test his ability to be the father of their eaglet together, she'll go down and she'll pick up a, a, a branch or a twig and she'll fly out really, really high. And the male eagle will fly up there with her. And then what she'll do is she'll drop that branch. And that male eagle better get his fucking ass down there and catch that thing before it hits the ground. If it hits the ground, she turns him away. She will not meet with him. What is that practicing? Because in the beginning process, when the eaglets are at the point of almost ready to fly, the mother will shove one of them out to show the other eaglets and the eaglet itself that it needs to learn how to fly. It's not meant to live in a nest. You're not, to, you're not meant to be under my tutelage forever. You're not meant to be in the nest of a demo forever. You have to start doing things, and it's going to be scary for you to be out there where you can hurt yourself. But the male eagle, what he does is he lets that eaglet drop for a little while. Then he swoops down and catches it before it hits the ground and kills it. Carries it back up to the nest and shows the mother that, yes, you picked the right father. I got us. I got our children. But that eaglet has now been introduced to the idea that I better flap my fucking wings. Because what happens if dad doesn't get to me in time? They have to do what? They have to trust the process of being uncomfortable and eventually finding their wings and flying. At some point, one of those eagles will probably be passed away before the other. And many times, they go through depression. And they stop flying. And they start walking around on the ground. Their claws start becoming disformed. And their beaks, they start molting. Where they get this like cast of calcification around their beak. And many times, unless they change the way they're doing things, they'll die in that state. Other eagles will come and they'll drop food down to them because they're no longer flying and hunting for it. And people say there's no creator. <laughs> the other eagles encourage the other eagle that's in depression to 
beat their own beaks against the rocks to break the calcification off and take flight. The ones that don't want to listen to sound advice and logic and encouragement to follow the process that they're not supposed to be walking around on their claws, they have wings. They're majestic, beautiful creations, creations and creatures of the world that God's presented us a, a bountiful testimony of creation. A buzzard ain't going to hang around a buzzard that's depressed. It's going to sit around and wait for it to die and eat it. An eagle, when it sees another one in lack and in suffering, it cares to it. It drops food down to it. And it goes down there, not just one of them, several of them, and they build them up or her up. And say, look, don't stay depressed like this. This is not what you were meant to be. You were not meant to be walking around on your claws. You're supposed to be soaring high. You need to be up here like us. Come back up here. We gave you something to eat. Strengthen yourself. But you have to beat yourself out of this. That means that the eagle will walk over to a rock and bang its beak against it until it gets all the calcification off of it. So that way it can go and fly and hunt and soar again. Every single one of you are going to go through that period in your trading. You're going to go through drawdown. You're going to be molting. And you can choose to stay in that grief. You can choose to stay in that depression. Or you can use these discussions I've given you here that are in recordings and stir you up. Remind you that you're not supposed to be what you are afraid of. Never escaping. Mediocrity. Lack. Not being able to meet your bills. Not making your ends meet. That's something that's a decision that you're staying in. You are doing that. There's no excuse for you not to be able to do it now. It's just the effort and time that's required. Some of you are going to have to beat your fucking head against this fucking rock. Break this calcification off. Listen to good advice that's being provided to you. I'm feeding you. I'm throwing you fish. And I've already taught you how to fish. It's time for you to mount up. Get to those higher heights. You're not a buzzard. You're not somebody eating dead, decaying things. You're thriving. You're excelling. You're elevated above everything else that this world wants to say that you're only due to receive. This is the best you can have. The American dream. There it is. Debt. 30 years in debt for the mortgage. That is a fucking lie and a trap. Look past that. Higher up. Have the perspective of an eagle. You see things differently. And you know what else is different? All the problems that are down there on the, on the ground, they're a lot smaller to an eagle because his perspective is so high. All your problems right now, you're living with them. They're big. They're real big. And when an eagle is molting, they're depressed. They forget the majesty of being up in that height, flying just opening their wings and letting the, the current just allow them to be aloft. And they're depressed. And they, 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 they knew that they could do that. They did it. But they're depressed. They lost their, their life mate. And they're depressed. And eagles look after their own. That's what makes them a wonderful creature. That's what, to me, is a testimony to there as a creator. They have empathy for one another. They take care of one another. And I am trying to be that dad eagle. Yes, sometimes I'm going to kick you out of the nest. I'm going to tell you it's, this is what's going to happen, and it's normal. But eventually there's going to be a real time where I'm going to let you fall. I'm not going to swoop down after November 11th. And I'm being honest and upfront with you so that way you know. I have scheduled my departure. I have done this. And you have everything that you need. Everything else is just your effort. But you're going to have to beat yourself out of that depression and that fear of wanting to be ground level when you're not meant to be ground level. 
So hopefully you got something out of this one today. I enjoyed talking with y'all. Weather looks pretty uh, ominous outside, so I think I'm going to go out there and watch how hard it can rain. Grab something to eat, and I'm going to wish you a very pleasant weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Until I talk to you next week, be safe.